It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, January 17, 2022. Hello again, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're safe and sound. Hope you're healthy. Hope you're warm. A lot of snow, a lot of sleet, a lot of slush on the Northeast if you're home uh, because of that or because it's a very special day. It's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Happy MLK Jr. Day to all of you. And uh, hopefully we continue to uh, live out his dreams and try to make the world a better place. 2022 is going to be our year, my friends. It's going to be a great year for all of us. doesn't matter your color, your race, your gender, your creed. It doesn't matter your faith. We're all coming together. And so I wish the very best uh, to all of you if you're home uh, on this frigid Monday in most parts of the country and around the world. Uh, I hope you're choosing to spend some time with all of us. I got to say, I'm in a great mood on this Monday. Y'all know why. Y'all know why. Great mood. Although I did promise our first guest that I would not talk about this at the top of the show. So I will save that chatter for a little later on. But y'all know why. Y'all know why. Hopefully he's not watching me right now. Anyway, uh, we've got a great show. No time to waste right off the top. Uh, we've got uh, later in the program, we're going to be joined by the reigning defending UFC featherweight champion, the one and only Alex the Great Volkanovsky, who's been all over the news over the past couple of weeks. Who's he fighting? Who's he not fighting? Who wants to fight him? Who doesn't want to fight him? When's he fighting? All that shall be addressed with Alex the Great at around 4 Eastern. 3.30, Rick's pick. Stay tuned for that. 3 o'clock, GC will check in with all of us about the weekend that was and his bets. 2.30, we'll talk to Michael Venom Page. Some big news regarding his next fight announced this morning. 2 o'clock, we'll talk to the reigning defending UFC bantamweight champion, Aljamain Sterling. He's been in the news as well, kind of linked with the whole Volkanovsky thing, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll answer some questions. I'll talk about some news. And then we'll, uh, prior to that, have Misha Tate on to talk about her move to 125 and this fight against Lauren Murphy that we talked about last week. Before we get to our first guest of the day, though, a reminder that today's program is brought to you by DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook is the official sports betting partner of not only the UFC, the NFL, but also the MMA Hour. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code the MMA Hour for a special offer when you sign up. Again, that's code the MMA Hour only at DraftKings, and now available in the great state of New York. So I'm kind of speaking very quickly here because our first guest has a flight to catch, and I don't want to keep him waiting. And so without further ado, let us go to the Zoom machine and say hello to the star of the weekend in MMA, the man who defied all the odds, all the naysayers, all the haters, all the critics, everyone who was just looking right past him, everyone who said that, oh, wait, oh, Giga should fight for the belt next, everyone that said he was done after the Max Holloway fight, the man who pulled one of the best performances out of his hat on Saturday against the streaking or the then streaking Giga Chikaze, the New England cartel's own Calvin Cater joining us right off the bat here. Hello, Calvin. How are you? I'm doing great, Aria. What an intro. What a start to my Monday. Yes. Doing great. I mean, look, it was a fantastic win, a fantastic performance. And dare I say, uh, the, the best performance out of a New Englander on Saturday. <laughs> no, I, start, right? no, I didn't say that. I know I was talking about you. I, listen, the service is a little. Uh, oh, I didn't intro. say that. I didn't. No, I, I was say. just talking about the fights. You know, it was great. It was you were great. Get it in. Get it in now, man. But, you know, I still got that that card in the back pocket. I'm going to just jump on the Tampa Bay Bucks now. Oh, of course yeah. you will. Like all no, you. Old Tom Brady. <laughs> listen, I'm not, I promise you. I promise you I wasn't going to get into it. I mean, I, I do remember <laughs> the texts and the DMs that you sent me after that Monday night game, but we won't get into that. I I know. Uh, you know. I jumped the gun. I jumped the gun. <laughs> and I tried to take the high road and be the classy one. Uh, but man, that was that was a great that was a great I know. Game. Bittersweet now. Bittersweet now. Um I mean, fantastic, man. What a win. What a performance. You've had some big wins, but considering how the last year went for you and considering all the talk about whether you'd be back and your health and all that, possible that was the greatest end of your career so far? You know, that's what a lot of people are saying, but they're always the biggest one to me. You know, the next one's always the biggest one because that's the one that I can impact. And um, and I'm just, and at this point, man, it sounds cliche, but I'm on to the next one, you know. And, and people always want to bring up the Max fight, this, that. And, 
I try to explain, like, I don't even want to talk about the previous fight, even after a, a, a win. Yeah. You know? Like, how can I do it? Like, the conversation after a loss, and it's always just, you know, but you take with a grain of salt because you get it. It is what it is. I've been there before, too. And it's, you know, it's not what happens to you. It's how you bounce back. And uh, I just focused all my efforts on the, on the comeback, and it all paid, uh, it all paid off last Saturday. Man, I, I was sitting in this chair on Monday of last week. We're talking about the fights. We're talking about 145 and Alex. And I was talking to New York Rick, my guy, and I was like, man. And I said this like 10 more times throughout the week. The disrespect shown to Calvin Cater this week was astounding. I mean, people were talking, what about Giga? I was like, yo, you know he has to fight a really tough guy named Calvin Cater. You know this guy has been there before. Did you listen to all of that? Not only from him, but from everyone else saying Giga should be next, Giga should be next. I mean, let alone what he was saying. And did you use that as motivation going into the fight? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we, we took you know, all those chips, um, you know, leading into the fight and, and calling out the champion. It, it wasn't something that I would do, you know, but um, now with the fight coming up, it's definitely just overlooking your opponent, the disrespect, like you said. We felt that way, but um, didn't really want to give him any like locker room material like we talked about, man. Just take that into the fight with me and, and know that it's dangerous once I, you know, I get an opportunity to make him pay for it. Were you confident going into the fight? Like, were you confident that it would go like that? Did you think it would be uh, a closer? <laughs> like, what were you feeling? Well, we had like, it, it was give or take. Like, the, the game plan was pretty much, uh, you know, what you saw, but. It would have been nice to probably land a couple more takedowns. He did a good job defending the takedowns later in the fight. And uh, I was I was glad I got the first one, kind of zapped him a little bit. And then uh, I felt like the speed, the power, a little bit like those things were off. But, um, yeah, I didn't expect to just go trade with him for the next four rounds, you know. And uh, But it, it worked out. And, um, it, <clears throat> you know, it, yeah, just just – Glad, glad it worked out the way it did, but it wasn't the way it was kind of planned to be, you know, just to stand up and get in a, a, a striking fight with, with them, you know. I was planning on more so trying to expose them more for, um, you know, the mixed martial arts side, the rest and the, the, the takedowns, things like that. But I have a habit of just getting in these <laughs> yeah, fucking wars, man. I Part of me, I think, just gets in that pocket and I just, I'm, I'm willing to trade and and, uh, and giggle as well. Man, man, see durable though. It was a hell of a fight. Man, what about those elbows? You're throwing elbows out there like jabs. I mean, it's really a thing of beauty. Uh, was that part of the game plan, or is that just something that comes in like when you're? I mean, to throw that, there's not a lot of people who could do that that quickly and that effortlessly with the elbows. Yeah, we were pressuring the whole fight, and anytime he wasn't kind of giving me, uh, he wasn't giving me space, then we were just kind of crashing in and things. So um, definitely, my hands. Uh, you know, save some some abuse that night. It was nice to give him a little bit of a break and use the elbows. My hands feel pretty good right now. It's a plus. And, um, and yeah, considering the the type of fight it was, I'm feeling pretty great. Like I said, man, the, the tougher ones are sitting with the L when you're healthy. Yeah. And you got you to gotta be patient for the next one. And, and, and it, you know, it's not so much the physical pain. That stuff fades. Um, you know, as long as you get the job done in the W, then, uh, then the physical stuff will work itself out and, and you just heal up for the next one. But... Yeah, happy to, to come away with a win. Uh, you know, that was one for two for New England fans. But uh, at least we gave him something to, you know. Wait, you bring it. Hey, listen, proper. I'm not talking. I don't know what you're talking about, one for two. I don't know. You're talking about <laughs> what? Uh, what? What is the, t I don't know what you're saying. Um, you know, you know uh, you're right. Moving on. Moving yeah. On. Next next question, as we like to say. Yes, you, di you did <laughs> give it, the timing. I don't know if you know that you probably don't. You were locked in, but it was amazing, like your fight started just as halftime started and your fight ended just as their quarter ended. It would have been perfect. I mean, it was great for, you know, for, for fans of the other team. It was perfect for us. I just, I appreciate man, the timing. I know, I know, <laughs> I know man. We deserve it. I'm not going to lie. You guys. Listen, that was 20 years. Match, fans, man. I'm trying to, that's, that, that's why it's good timing for the New England to cartel. We're trying to get, that's right. to get behind, you know, but it's, uh, it's a little rough for the other sports teams right now, but we're, we're still behind them. You know, everyone's counting them out, but, I'm expecting, you know, it's not what happens. It's the, it's the bounce back. So That's right. The Patriots. Look, I mean, you are the walking embodiment of that. Um, saw a great photo of you guys afterwards. I think it was in the hospital or in the ambulance or somewhere. Um, could you tell us about that interaction? What did you guys say to each other? Yeah, just bumping into him left and right, uh, leading into the fight. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, going into the hospital after, uh, we bumped into each other. And, um, you know, it's always easy to kind of show each other respect after you you know, throw down with each other for 25 minutes. Um, a lot of the motions are kind of settled, but, um, yeah, you know, just, just respect, you know, tough fight. He's durable. I hit him with some clean shots that most people I think would have, you know, 
took a knee or fell down or, or, or you know, he, he was he was wobbling but never really kind of dropped. Towards the end of the round, I thought I might have had him, but um, yeah, credit to him, he held off and yeah, it was a hell of a fight. So you saw him a lot throughout the week leading up to the fight? Towards the end, just kind of bumping into him and then uh, doing the piss test in USADA. I saw oh. him out back. I'm like, you guys, yeah, you guys don't got any extra damn bathrooms back yeah. here? You know, you, you, Awkward? Whatever. I mean, man, we're professionals, man. It's not the, it's really not the biggest deal, right. but it's like, you know, whatever. Uh, it's just funny, man. Then I, I bump into him. Yeah, all week I'm just kind of bumping into him. But like I said, man, it was more just kind of, all that stuff's bullshit. You know, even all the interviews, all the crap, it doesn't matter. It boils down to 25 minutes in the octagon. And, you know, all the talking in the world uh, at that point is irrelevant. Um, I was I was looking through the, the news this morning. I saw this on MMA Junkie. He did a, a Facebook Live session last night talking about the fight. I uh, just want to read you a quote and get your response if I could. He said, I fucked up last night, but it's all good. It's the journey. I'm learning from this. Next time I'm going to come back so much stronger. I already feel bad for my future opponents. So I'm going to learn a lot from this one. Trust me on that. Also, I feel like if I would fight with this guy 10 times, nine, I would win. That would be the one I would lose. And that was last night. It is what it is. I made mistakes and I'm paying uh, for that now. It's all good. I'm unbreakable. Remember this shit. Georgians are always unbreakable. This is how we fight until the F and end. Nine times out of 10. Did he say that to you in the hospital? No, no. It's it's different when you hear people in person in interviews, but I don't take it personal, man. It's whatever. Uh, you know, I wish him a speedy recovery, bounce back. I told him all you can do now is uh, make the next guy pay. You know, yeah. that's exactly what I did. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully he responds to the loss uh, well. It doesn't sound like um, it's going that way early, but hopefully, you know, he, he just understands that. Uh, honestly, he can understand whatever he wants. For me, it helped me to just focus on the things I can control and and, and focus on the comeback, but uh, not so much really the last one. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, look, he's a great fighter. Anyone who says otherwise is lying. Uh, we know in MMA you can lose once and go and win four in a row and be right back in there, three in a row, two in a row. I do have a hot take for you, Calvin. Um, you know, all this talk about Volkanovski, it seems like, you know, it's going to be Korean zombie. But Volkanovski was supposed to fight who next? Max Holloway. Who, you know, who was your last loss to? Max Holloway. I actually feel like you would have a very strong case on this Monday to be next in line for a title shot, more so than Korean zombie. I mean, if you look at your last few fights and Zombie's last few fights, and you didn't say a word of that. You didn't say a word of that leading into the fight. You didn't say a word of it leading out of the fight. And I think that says a lot about you. You know what I'm saying? Because you could sit here right now and be like, yo, put my resume of the last few fights up to, you know, uh, up against Zombie's. Yours is actually just as impressive, if not more impressive. Your lone loss is to the guy who was supposed to fight for the belt, who a lot of people think is the uncrowned champ. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying, man. A lot of a lot of these guys think you know they can cut the line with their mouths rather than earning earning it with their fights, you know. And um, that's not my style. I I I'd rather talk less about it, go out and prove it, and because um, that's the only thing that really matters, man. Go out and earn your title shots. I know guys like Max, guys like uh, you know Volkanovski, they want contenders. They 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 can see through the bullshit, um, you know, more than the casual other people that, that are chiming in. But um, all I'm trying to do is prove that I'm, I'm the number one contender and uh, fight anybody that I have to in order to, to go out and, and get these big opportunities, man, like the Maxes and, and the Alexes. And, um, yeah, great checkpoint. Though. I'm happy to be in this uh, top five division with these guys. And, um, and yeah, like, I, I don't I don't like it. Now it's post-fight, I'm down to talk about it. Prior, man, it just seems like a... Um, you know, uh, mismanaged focus. You know what I mean? You, yeah. You can't really control the, the fight with the champ. You have a fight with me, kind of overlooking me. And I, I definitely took that personally, as they said. Uh, I, I love the idea of if, obviously, you know, they go in the direction of Volkanovski zombie. I love the idea of you versus Ortega or you versus Yair Rodriguez next. Do you like those? And if so, do you have a preference? I don't really, for, I don't care for really any of them. Honestly, whatever one gets me uh, the biggest yeah. opportunities, biggest pays it, it Rinse and repeat all of them. They're all tough guys. They all present problems. You know, you got to go in and put together a game plan. And um, they're all they're all the same to me in a sense, you know, give or take. They're all tough. They all present problems. But, um, yeah, as far as that that main event uh, title fight, I know champ, uh, uncrowned champ Max always next in line. But, um, you know, should he he not be recovered by the time uh, the fight happens or, or – Situation makes sense. I know Zombie wasn't planning on on you know kind of jumping the line at what was he for or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, crazy things have happened, but I'll be ready to go just in case. Uh, you know, I know things are in shambles a little bit right now. So all I can do is focus on being ready as possible should I get that call. But either way, I'm excited to see the division moving again. I know for a year or two ago, it was kind of stuck in, in, in mud a little bit. And at least we're seeing some fights happening. And um, it, it's exciting time to be part of the featherweight division. I told you I'd let you go at uh, 10, 15 Vegas time. So I shall let you go. Just a very quick thing. Uh, perfect world. When do you want to return? Like springish, April? Something like that, April, May. Yeah, I don't need any. I don't need any help missing this flight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty good job of it. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm healthy. Like I said, just uh, getting back. Uh, I'll be ready to go when something that makes sense presents itself. You know, I stay in the gym. Um, just nothing else to do but get back to work right now, man. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not satisfied. So uh, back to work and ready for the next big opportunity. All right. Uh, go get your flight, man. Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Congrats on the win and uh, congrats on shutting a lot of people up. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. All right. There he is. Calvin Cater joining us. Kind enough uh, to join us uh, before he flies out and heads off to New England. And you'll recall uh, we had him on uh, around the time that the Bills were going to play the uh, Patriots on Monday Night Football. Uh, he rubbed it in. We then went to New England, beat them. I didn't say anything because I knew the playoffs were coming, and I made him a promise to say I wouldn't rub it in. But you know how we're feeling on this Victory Monday, one of the all-time great sporting events that I've ever witnessed. And I don't want to, you know, I, I'm not going to be that guy. Like Coach McDermott says, humble and hungry, okay? You got to be humble and hungry. Job's not done. Shout out to the late, great Kobe Bryant. Member of our staff is a is a Patriots fan, Joe. So I don't want to rub it in. I don't want to be insufferable. But you have to understand, twenty years of beatdowns, you know, brings out some emotions. Uh, and that was just, I mean, something special. The Micah Hyde interception. I mean, the Josh Allen more touchdowns and incompletions. I mean, one of the all time great performances in the history of sports. If I'm being honest, I'm not trying to be too hyperbolic here. But in the intro, I mean, I just <laughs> in the history of sports, it's just one of the all time great uh, sporting events of my lifetime, at least. I don't know about your lifetime, my lifetime. You know, we've got a big comeback. Uh, you know, big revenge game on um, on Sunday. So we'll see. Uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out Sunday, 630. You'll know where I'll be. A little revenge. For now, though, let us move along to our next guest. Um, I, I can't promise that this topic won't come up throughout the show. I just want to let you all know. Be prepared, all you Patriots fans, in your feelings. I come in peace. I just, I can't help it sometimes, okay? I love you guys. I respect you guys. We're all friends. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. But it just it comes out. Uh, big news last week. We found out that uh, Misha Tate going down to 125, and she had been teasing this, hinting at it for quite some time. So I said, you know what? We need to talk to Cupcake Tate about this. So without further ado, let's go to the uh, Zoom machine and now say hello to Misha Tate. We're keeping things rolling here this morning. Hello, Misha. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you, too. And thank you for joining us. I know you have your show coming up at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM. Throwing it down with Renee and Misha. I still feel like it should be Misha and Renee, if I'm being honest. A-side, you know. Oh, thank you. I mean, what a compliment. I'm going to put it in Renee is word. great, though. So it's, you know, playing second fiddle to her is no no offense. She's she's fantastic. She's got a great sense of humor. So I, I'm a lot of times I find myself trying to keep up with her on the radio. <laughs> I must, I must say, I'm a massive Renee fan. I'm just trying to stir the pot here a little bit. Uh, and she's a Canadian <laughs> sister. So uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of hers and yours. Uh, so big news. Is this happening? 125? Is this a real thing? You going down? Yes, that is my intention. I have made the commitment to go down to 125. Why? Well, uh, a few reasons. I think I automatically assumed that 135 was always my weight class because that's all there ever was. When I got into strike force, it was only 135 well, and 145. Um, and uh, when I got into the UFC, it was only 135. And by the time 125 came around, I was just so enveloped it at 135 trying to win that title and the rivalry obviously with Ronda and then I you know I did win it with against Holly but as the sport has evolved I've just very rarely ever had a reach advantage I've rarely had a height advantage and I started thinking about things like you know Jose Aldo dropping weight classes you know there's been a, a, a lot of different instances um 
Henry Cejudo, you know, what he did, he did, it was a two weight class champ, but even Valentina Shevchenko, you know, she was, she was a, a great, a great fighter at 135, but she was never dominant. And, um, I've just seen it now a lot of times where I think that that might be my, my true weight class. If I'm being honest, I think that I could actually have some physical advantages in that weight class that I, I rarely have at 135. Uh, I don't feel like there's a strength discrepancy at 135, but I could only imagine fighting women that are built to be 10 pounds smaller could lend itself to, to really showing my greatness as, as opposed to fighting these Goliaths, you know, where I just feel like, I feel like I've got to give it a shot, right? I've got to give it a shot. Uh, was there something in particular about that fight against Caitlin Vieira that made you think, all right, it's time to do this? She was very long in her reach. She would, you know, she had a really long, yeah, she had a really long reach. So that was certainly something that factored in. She felt really tall and just big inside there. Absolutely. Um, again, I don't feel like it was a strength thing. I don't feel like that's a fight that I couldn't have won. I didn't, I didn't win it. And I still think that looking back on it, I'm kind of kicking myself for, for not being more aggressive and more wrestling heavy, but, um, it wasn't just that fight in particular. This is just a, a career move that I think could be more promising for, for becoming a champion. And, um, you know, another reason, although I know I'm a little bit away from a bit away from getting a potential title shot, but, uh, with Julie being crowned the champion at 135, also, I would just prefer if we could be champions at the same time together mm. and, uh, Pacific Northwest takeover. Yes. I like that as well. Um, do you also feel regardless of Juliana's status, is there a part of you that feels like the road to the championship because there just aren't a ton of big names at 125 and also Valentina has beaten all the contenders? I mean, I think her next right. opponent might be Tyler Santos, who's like eight or nine at this point, just because she's beaten everyone else. It's just a little shorter to get a title shot at 125 as opposed to 35. It is. And I can absolutely I'll always go back up to 135. So I feel like this is kind of a no harm, no foul. It's something that would bother me if I didn't pursue it because it's been on my mind for a while. I've really been weighing out all of the options and seeing some of the women who were meant to be at 125 once they once they went down and, and were really shining. I think Valentina would be the best case to draw that that kind of scenario. Um Maybe 125 was always where I was meant to be. I mean, if I if if I'm being honest with you, um, my first fight back with Marion Renault, the morning of the fight, so after making 136, or I think I weighed in at 135 actually, uh, I only got back up to 139 pounds. Hmm. So I'm not putting on the size and the weight, um, and it's by you know it's by design. I don't want to have large weight cuts. However, that was a non-existent weight cut. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even cut weight. Super easy. So, so it, it's just that I think that my frame and my build and everything that uh, could come together really well for me at 125. Now, um, you know, in life, uh, we are obviously told that, you know, the the gentlemen are told not never to ask a woman about her weight, but we are talking about a weight class. It's fighting is different, right? right. Different rules. <laughs> could I ask, like right now-ish, like when you're not in camp, what do you walk around at? Low, low 140s. Okay. So this shouldn't be too bad for you, right? I mean, are you dreading no, it? I, How do you no, feel? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be too bad for me. It's just a matter of being diligent and just changing a bit of the program design. I don't want to have a big weight cut, but I'm okay with having a weight cut. And the, you know, the last camp, I was a little bit bigger, just a couple pounds. We had put on some muscle, um, had a very small, easy weight cut. I think the weight cut will be you know, slightly more intense, but, um, I just need to focus on getting body mass down to a reasonable area to cut, but I don't think I'm very far off from that. I know a lot of 125 pound women who sit right at about 140 pounds. That's about average for a 125 pound female outside of camp. And that's where I sit also. So I think that maybe, maybe this might be the right move. I hope. <laughs> Was there any part of you, in addition to, you know, her length and all that, 
that in retrospect felt, you know, because we were talking, hey, you win this fight, you could be next for Amanda, all that stuff. Was there any part of you that uh, maybe looked past Caitlin in retrospect? Honestly, I knew that Caitlin had some great things that she, she could bring to the fight. I don't feel like I looked past her because I always know in the moment, you know, and I'm always, I'm never going to change that. I'm always going to have my short, mid and long-term goals. And I think that's okay. It would be ridiculous to say, I'm not going to fight. I'm already looking at Valentina. You know what I mean? Like whoever that I end up fighting at 125, I mean, the long-term goal is that. So I'm always going to have that long-term goal. And I don't think that anyone should be faulted for that. And I don't think that, um, I look past her at all. No, not whatsoever. I mean, I, I definitely thought I was focused on that fight. I know I was focused on that fight at that time. I think what ended up happening is that, um, the corner was very chill and I stayed very chill the whole fight. I kind of didn't get that feedback of like, Hey, now's the time to go. And you know, it's, it's just tough. It was, it was a tough dynamic. It was a learning situation. I look at that fight as a bit of a sophomore slump. Mm. If it was the any fight that I was going to lose in my comeback, that was the fight to lose. And it was close. I mean, it really came down to one round. Um, that's, I lost one round more than, you know, she did the last three rounds to one. Although I disagree with round one of all the rounds. I really thought that round one was my round. Um, I ended up on top. I had any of the clinch control. The, I even had the striking count. I feel like I was more aggressive. It wasn't like a, like a landslide by any means, but you know, marginally, I thought I won the round in each area marginally. Um, but all three judges scored that round against me. So that was really interesting. But, um, regardless, I didn't walk away with the win. I didn't ever put my foot on the gas pedal. The other thing is that my conditioning is so good that I've never experienced this before where I don't feel tight. I don't feel the level of exhaustion that I would recognize in my other fights that would tell me this is a time that you've got to go. You know, when you start feeling that, that point of tired, sometimes you've got to put a little more Mm. so that you can get it to a place where you could rest if you needed to, or you've got, you've just got to push beyond that wall. I never even hit that. So I'm kicking myself for it because I know I had so much more to offer. And that's the worst feeling worse than a loss is to know that you didn't put everything out there. And I didn't realize that five rounds had gone by. I mean, it just kind of flew by and I was like, wait a minute, we're done. And what can I say? You know, I, I, I made a mistake Uh, and uh, I'm going to correct that. Will you change anything in the corner for, for the next one? I believe that I will have Eric Nixick back into the corner. Um, he wasn't a part of this corner for a couple reasons. One, I needed a body. I needed somebody my size. And um, Maida, my training partner, she spoke Portuguese, which I felt like was important. So, um, and Johnny was important to be in there. And then obviously Rick is, but the the hard part about Rick is being remote. Yeah. You know, he's not here all the time. And so there was a little bit of uh, miscommunications in the corner and it wasn't any, but you know, there's no fingers to be pointed. Nobody did anything malicious. Nobody did anything bad. It's just that it's difficult to orchestrate a camp when, you know, one of your coaches is not able to be here the majority of the time. So I, I need somebody who can be hands-on, who can tell me, you know, that's there every day that sees my work that can communicate what I need to do. So I think that Eric, bringing him back into the corner is something that I'm probably going to look to do. By the way, why, why did you need someone who spoke Portuguese? Um, because I thought it was important to know what they were telling her in the corner. Ah, interesting. Okay. And, and so was she relaying that info to you? She was relaying it to the corner. However, it didn't get relayed in the messaging. So that was a little bit of a disappointment as well, but it's, it's hard, you know, this is a hard job to do. Yeah. Um, I think if I had known that they were scolding her for shooting, I definitely think that could have changed things a little bit as well. I wasn't aware of that. And I wasn't aware that they were just trying to time the right hand. You know, these are things that when in you're in the apex, if somebody was speaking English, I would be hearing it too. You right. know what I mean? But not knowing those things. So I didn't, I wasn't aware of that during the fight. Um, yeah, it probably could have changed things a little bit for me. You like the Lauren Murphy matchup? 
if that's the fight that's next, okay. I do. I like that a lot. Um, you know, I, I, I have not been officially uh, scheduled about, so I don't know who it'll be for sure, but if it's somebody in the top five, I'll be really excited the way that I would, I mean, it, it could definitely be Lauren. And if I fought Lauren Murphy, you know, it took Valentina four rounds to take her out. Um, I've got three. I would, I would, I think it would make a pretty good case. She just fought for the title, right? So yeah, yeah that would be a good one. And I'm a major fan of Lauren. I love her to death. She's just awesome and a great fighter. So that would be a very fun fight. Is there any chance it's not Lauren? Of Is course. that possible? I haven't signed about agreement. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So I, I have not even been presented about agreement. So I, I don't know for sure, but um, yeah, there's definitely, definitely a chance it's not Lauren. Do, do you like the idea of fighting in May? I do. I think that's perfect timing for me. I think uh, we're on schedule to to make 126 by May. Um, I probably could have even done it a little bit sooner, but I think May 14th is a good date for me. Uh, there was some back and forth with Aspen. It didn't seem like you really considered that, right? To stick around at 135 to settle whatever issues there were between you guys, that wasn't something really top of mind for nah. No, it just, it wasn't very interesting to me. I just want to know that she's on par to make 135. I, um, it, it's not personal for me. It's, I don't really, I don't have a vendetta against Aspen Ladd. I just call it like it is. And the truth hurts sometimes and it offends people. And that's how I see it. So I understand that it probably ruffled her feathers. It wasn't probably what she wanted to hear about not you know, about manipulating the weight on the scale and things like that. But yeah, you know, if I come back to 135 and if she can consistently make it, it's not a fight that I'm avoiding. Um, I think she's a great fighter um, and we'll see what happens. But I, it, it, from my humble opinion, I think that 145 is probably a more well-suited weight class for her anyways. So I think we're a ways off from that, but no, not, not a fight, not a fight that I'm avoiding mm. just, not a fight that I'm interested in until I know I'm not wasting my time. And you know, Ariel, you're a parent, you're a busy man. I mean, could you imagine if you went and did all this preparation and, and work yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden, whatever that opportunity was, was just off uh, through no fault of your own. I don't want to take that risk. So, you know, someone else can, can do it. Irene, Irene. Yeah. She, I think she agreed to take that fight. So I hope that it works out. I hope that Aspen can make the weight. Um, you know, I, I don't wish her any ill will. Were you surprised? I know you have a relationship with her. You know her very well. But Juliana beating Amanda, one of the biggest upsets that we've ever seen. Were you surprised when that happened? Or were you really confident? Of course, there's an element of surprise. Amanda seemed almost unstoppable at the time. However, I was the one person advocating saying, Julie has a path to victory here, you guys. I mean, yes, Amanda is deadly. And if she hits anybody... They can go down and she does it really well. So yes, this is, a, this is a challenge for her. However, you know, Julie is a, not someone to be intimidated by all of the other hype and all of the other things, you know, at the end of the day, Julie breaks it down very simply. She, she's just another woman. And I love that approach. Um, Julie had the right mentality and she had the tools to beat it. And that's another thing that I said was, we haven't seen somebody take Amanda to the ground in, in a really long time and put, or put her in compromising positions in a really long time. And I knew Julie was the person to be able to do that. So I was really happy, really happy for her. It seems like no one's giving her any kind of respect going into a potential rematch. Like everyone thinks like, oh, of course, Amanda slipped and she'll right the wrong oh, and beat her. They're crazy. They're you think crazy. she wins the rematch? I don't think her. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm, she just has a no quit, no give up mentality. And, and now that the seed of doubt has been planted in Amanda's mind, mm. that's probably where, um, I see the biggest change going. And that's not a, that's, that's, you know, not going to favor Amanda. By the way, historically, when a champion has a belt, loses it and they run it back right away. Right. So in this case, Amanda fighting historically, that person who had the belt I think nine times out of 10 loses. If you look at the history right. of the UFC, there is something to be said for maybe getting another fight, building your confidence back up and then fighting that person that beat you, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it makes sense because it, once someone dethrones you, it's just such a big tumble and then you've got to try to 
fix all fix the things and and the 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 mental shift that happens in all of that i can only imagine it's very challenging to try to get right back up there and fight the person who just figured out how to unlock pandora's box you right. know what i mean like how do you how do you come up with something that they haven't seen if you don't have time to develop or maybe try it on someone someone else you know uh, I wanted to ask you this before I let you go, because uh, you I know you have your show to do. So last week we had Kevin Holland on the show, um, and he's fighting Alex Oliveira, Cowboy Oliveira. He announced this news via his OnlyFans. Uh, you can probably guess where I'm going oh. with this. And you have taken on the entire OnlyFans community, Misha. Holy smokes. Because I guess I you know. made a comment, and then everyone came after you, fighters, I think adult films, like everyone came after you. It was like left and right. I saw you trying to fight right. off everyone, right. like in the cartoons when all the bad guys... What happened here? And do you want to, what, what pissed them off so much? And do you want to clarify any stance of yours towards going the OnlyFans route? Yes. First of all, this was not a public statement, although I understand whatever I say on the internet, even if it is just a comment back to a fan on my YouTube channel, not something I've meant publicly, that yes, it can be taken out of context and the media can take and do what they want. I would like to note that none of the head headlines actually quoted me. They only used one word that I used. Mm. Um, but I have been getting a lot of comments and even to the point where I feel like it's like harassing me, like, leave me alone. I, I don't want to have an only fans. I don't want to do that because I feel like in my position, people are already recall calling for my retirement. They're already writing me off you know, and I've worked so hard for so long being a pioneer of this sport that I will do everything that I can to be taken as serious as I can. And this is my personal, this is not a reflection of how anyone else chooses to lead their life. Or if they feel good about doing the OnlyFans, then great, do it. I, I have no problem with women going out there, men going out there, whoever wants to get on OnlyFans, do it. But for me, I don't want to be perceived as someone who is, is fighting as a secondary, you know, or getting attention for fighting as a secondary. I don't want OnlyFans to be the reason that people uh, are interested in me. So that's just how I choose. I'm engaged. I'm a mother of two. And I let one fan kind of piss me off. And, and because it was accumulating of people, a star only fans, retire, doing only fans, retire, doing only fans. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, I'm not desperate for that. You know, I, I want to fight. I don't, I don't need money. And that's kind of where my, where the clarification goes for that. It's like, I'm not, I wouldn't just go and sell myself on only fans for just money. I don't need money and I'm not doing this for money. I'm, I'm okay guys. Like I'm okay. And the word choice I used was wrong. And I'm very sorry if it offended anybody who has an only fans, because it certainly was not my intention. I was not targeting anybody. And I think, uh, look, I love Kendra lust. I've, I've, I'm just a big supporter of any, uh, we don't, I'm going to say women, of, but in people in general, but I'm such a big supporter and a proponent of women doing whatever they want. Yeah. Well, long but live America. Like I love the fact that we can have the choices and I completely support it. I'm just afraid that for my personal journey, people would judge me and look at me like, Oh, she just came back to fighting. And now she's just going to sell her, you know, make an only fans like, and it's just not where I want to go as a, you know, as a mom of two and as a, as a fiance. So that's, I hope clarifies where I was coming from. You know, I support anybody doing whatever it is that makes them happy. But on my personal journey, I would just appreciate it if the fans would stop asking me to do that. <laughs> that is very fair. I would say the naive person in me would say there's probably a compliment in there when they're telling you to do that, right? When they're saying, hey, like, no yeah, one's, no yeah, one's coming to course. me to ask me to start an OnlyFans, but... if I'm being honest. So there's a compliment in there. <laughs> but the fact that you were, I understand that they were offended by the word desperate. And it sounds like you regret using that word. But the fact that any, right. know, like this idea that someone – the one thing, and I guess people could call it cancel this, whatever, this idea that you can slip up once in a non-offensive way. Like you did not use any derogatory term, racist term, anything no. like that. And, and now – and you were – I saw you getting harassed right. about this. It's just yeah. – it ruins the social media experience for everyone. So I think you've explained yourself quite well, and Done. I'm sorry that you Thank went through Thank you that. so much. Yeah. And I do sincerely apologize if it hurt like any, I did not want to hurt anyone's feelings or make them feel bad for having only fans. Like you want to have one, 
go for it. I support it 100%. But please, you guys, stop asking that of me because it's not the direction I want to go. I want to pursue fighting and I appreciate we can all have our individual choice. So let me have mine. Yes. Amen. And uh, you've launched a YouTube channel as well where you kind of first put out this 125, 135 thing. What, what, is, what is the... Uh, the URL or they just search for Misha Tate, it pops up. Yes. Yeah. If you just search for Misha Tate, it'll pop up. And, um, yeah. Oh gosh. If I even know the exact URL, I don't know. You guys gonna find it. It's, it's not difficult to find. It's all over my Instagram. If you mm-hmm. want to, I appreciate you guys supporting that. Um, do try to put out news and unique content that you're not going to find anywhere else. Um, so thank you for that. And and tune in to our radio show, Sirius XM, Throwing Down with Renee and Misha is coming up right after this show, actually. Right after this. So I will let you go. <laughs> uh, thank you, as always, for making time for us, Misha. Uh, good luck with the move down to 125. And yes, do check out Throwing Down with either Renee and Misha or Misha and Renee, whichever way you want to go uh, on Sirius XM at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. Appreciate you very much, Misha. All the best. Appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. Right, talk to you soon. There she is, the one and only Misha Tate. Uh, yes, officially moving down to 125. Interesting uh, to hear what she had to say there about uh, Lauren Murphy, about that not being 100% just yet. It has been uh, widely reported everywhere. So, you know, uh, she said very good chance it could be Lauren, and uh, she hasn't gone to the bout agreement yet. But uh, that would be, you know, I think an appropriate fight for her flyweight debut. And, and yes, there aren't a ton of options right now for Valentina Shevchenko at 125 just because she's beaten everyone. I think the Santos fight makes a lot of sense, but she's beaten Andrade. She's beaten Chukagin. Chukagin one is a really interesting situation because she just won again on Saturday, but she's a free agent. She's kind of in that weird Yushinokami, John Fitch territory of many moons ago where she's really good She's beating the majority of the fighters in the top 10 that she faces. But she lost to the champion. And I don't think there's a huge demand just given her style to see her fight for the belt again or to fight in a number one contender fight. And so I'm really curious to see what the UFC does with Caitlin Chukagin. Like they could send a message here that, which they've sent in the past, but with Fitch and Okami, it was after a loss. Um, They were just released. So I'm curious, like right now, as far as the UFC official rankings are concerned, she's second. Uh, what what a interesting statement that would be if they don't re-sign her. And she seemed to feel 50-50 in the post-fight that she'd get a new contract from the UFC. What's interesting is, obviously, in the PFL, there's no 125. She could go to Bellator. They have a 125-pound division. Um not a ton of names at 125, but there is an option there for her. But it's just really interesting when you have these weight classes where there's a really dominant champion, she's beaten everyone there, and you have to go all the way down to, you know, like number eight. I see right now Santos is number five, but I think they just, you know, slowly but surely move her up because the title shot is coming. Misha Tate goes in there and beats Lauren Murphy. You would think maybe one more, and they might feel compelled to do that Misha Tate versus valentina shevchenko fight so thank you very much to misha looking forward to that um in around 17 or so minutes we're going to be joined by aljamain sterling after that michael Venn and page later on in the program alex volkanovsky i can't wait to talk to alex volkanovsky about the last two weeks in his life going from agreeing somewhat to fight max holloway then finding out 48 hours later that max holloway's out then this whole thing about, you know, are you fighting this guy? Everyone's coming after him. Giga's coming after him. Cejudo's coming after him. Yair is saying, put me in there. Emmett's saying, put me in there. Of course, we end up with the zombie, the one guy who really didn't campaign campaign all that much. Um, so I'm really curious to see how he feels about everything. And like I said last week on this show, what did I say last week on this show? In fact, I do think we have the clip. What did I say speaking to New York Rick last week about the whole Giga Cater thing? We have that clip. Can we run that clip? Because I saw some people say, prove to me where you said this. Like, I need to go and be your personal TV guy, your personal Google machine, and I need to go find the clip for you. No, I said it 9,000 times last week. Here's the clip of me reminding you all not to count out Calvin Cater. It's not announced. It's it's still close. It's pretty damn close. It's close, but look, if if Giga puts on that, you know. Uh, I mean, I think by Saturday. You think it'll be done before then? All right. I, I well, mean, at least last I heard. I mean, I haven't checked my phone and stuff like that. I'll also say that 
it has been disrespectful to Calvin Cater. Like, people are just talking like this fight isn't even happening. Well, fair. Fair for sure. But I, I think I from saw, the perspective I saw so that- many what about Gigas? I'm like, you do know he's fighting someone. Like, you could say, why not wait for Giga? Yeah. But I, I, I've heard people just say, like, what about Giga? Like, yo, he, he's fighting Calvin Cater. He's fighting Cater. Calvin Cater. He's fighting Calvin Cater. What did I say to all of you? Stop disrespecting this man. Did you guys forget how good Max Holloway is? Did you forget just how good he is? Did you forget that it's not that bad to lose to him? And yes, I know it was one-sided. And yes, I know he took a lot of shots. And yes, I know he was never really in that fight. All of a sudden, you guys are pretending like, you know, Calvin Cater is freaking Iron Mike Sharp. Okay? If you get the reference. He's freaking Barry Horowitz out there. Now, I will say this. I think a lot of the talk from Giga's social media wasn't coming from Giga, especially the stuff about me. So I like Giga a lot. I would, you know, say to him that he's going to bounce back and he's going to be right back in there and he's going to be a top contender at 145. He's a supremely talented guy. So don't fall into that whole mess of the social media and the trash talk and all that stuff. But I would say a lot of people were just pretending like Calvin wasn't going to be there and saying, what about Giga? What about Giga? What about Giga? And what I said there was, okay, you can maybe talk about it on Sunday or Monday after the fight, but talking about it last week is just a crazy thing. Calvin Cater is really good. He's really good. And as what I was saying to him, one second here, let me pull this up. I was saying to Calvin this. So, I'm t- by the way, for the record, I'm totally fine with the Korean zombie fight. I think it's fun. There's a history there. I'm totally fine. Zombies, what? Let's go last four fights. So dating back to 2018. Win over Hinata Moikano, TKO. Win over Frankie Edgar, TKO. Decision loss to Brian Ortega. Unanimous decision over Dan Ige. I think it's a fine resume to have going into that. You want to compare it to Calvin. Calvin's last four fights... KO of Jeremy Stevens, decision over Ige, lost to Holloway, beat Giga. It's very close. Like, if there's anyone here who actually might have a case to be upset, it's actually Calvin Cater, the one guy who hasn't brought any of this up, the one guy who didn't open his mouth last week, and rightfully so because he was coming off the loss going into that fight. But I think that's super interesting. Now, in the end, you know, Zombie will get it. And I have no problem with that. And I think a fight between Calvin Cater and Brian Ortega or Yair Rodriguez makes a hell of a lot of sense. Now, I would lean towards Ortega if only because Ortega's last fight was in September and Yair's last fight was in what? December? What was that? December, right? Was that December? Like early December. So, no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, It was after the MSG card. So mid-ish November, early to mid-November. So he took you know, a ton of shots in that fight. And I think he's probably going to need a little more time than Ortega who fought two months prior. Uh, So I would lean towards that. But either one of those to me are the no brainer. Now, the one guy that doesn't get talked about enough is Josh Emmett. And he figures to be in that mix as well. And we still don't know how long Max Holloway is going to be out for. It could be a month. It could be six months. His situation is still very much up in the air. So I think they're making the right call. I think everyone needs to chill Volkanovski, Zombie's a fun fight stylistically. I, I can't see any scenario that it's a boring fight. You got Cater back, and there's a lesson to be learned here for everyone. Don't look past your opponent. I mean, Misha was talking about titles. Don't look past your opponent. Not in this game. Not with how talented these fighters are. Now, the Henry Cejudo situation is super interesting. Wow. That is a really interesting situation. And I love what I'm hearing from Henry. It's about time we get this, Henry. The gimmick wasn't working for the last two years. I was listening to Henry do a bunch of interviews, a bunch of clips. He takes off the crown and he's shooting from the hip. And you could tell he's annoyed. You could tell he's perturbed. You could tell he's emotional. Again, I said it last week. His frustrations were misplaced, misdirected. He was calling Volkanovsky X, Y, and Z. Volkanovsky is not the guy who didn't give you the title shot. In fact, and we'll ask him, I think Volkanovski would be into that fight because of the uniqueness and the historical angle to it all. The UFC never called him. They never made the offer. And I think, again, not trying to be a broken record here, but I think the lesson that Henry is learning and a lot of other fighters should learn, don't retire out of the blue in the heat of the moment on the UFC. Don't leave him high and dry. 
Now, you could bring up GSP all you want. You can't compare the draw that was GSP to the draw that is Henry Sudo. That's just, I mean, that's just as unbiased and factual as it can get. Pull up the numbers, the gates, the pay-per-views, and put them side side by side. I mean, there's no comparison there. And so, yes, Connor will get special treatment. George will get special treatment. Draws get special treatment. Stars get special treatment. That's just the way it goes, not only in fighting, but in all sports and all walks of life. And so you can't bring that up. But this notion that, like I, I heard Dana on Saturday say, like, isn't he retired? Well, yeah, I mean, guys do retire and come back. But the fact that he keeps bringing that up, something that happened almost two years ago now, May will be two years, shows you just how annoyed they were. That was a big deal for them, that, that fight. Remember that fight card? That was the first fight card back, May 9th, I think, 2020, 2020 pandemic. All eyes on the UFC, huge buy rate, co-main event, Cruz, Cejudo. And then what's one of the big stories coming out of it? Cejudo retiring on the spot. Left them high and dry. They don't like that. Now, I don't begrudge. He, everyone is allowed to retire. Everyone's allowed to do whatever the hell they want. Everyone can retire whenever they should be able to retire. But they are allowed to feel a certain way about it. Now, what's going to be interesting is... How long left on that contract? Because every contract at some point has a term, has an ending. So we're now two years in. Did he sign a new deal before that fight? Does he have a year left? Because at some point he has to say like, hey guys, you got to give me a fight. I want to come back. Unless he's just saying, I'm only coming back for Volkanovski, which I would advise would be misguided. The UFC has done these special things in the past. They will do these special things in the past. But A, they weren't happy with what he did. And B, he just doesn't have that clout. But I would say to Henry, this is nice. This is refreshing. It's nice to see this Henry back. This is the Henry that we first fell in love with, that we were first drawn to. The gimmick is fun, but every gimmick needs to evolve over over time. Uh, We've been using the same one for two and a half years, three years. And so it was really, I was like, wow, I miss this Henry. Now he has to be careful and I think he'll ultimately be fine. You know, he's got the right management. He's got the right people representing him. I think he'll ultimately be fine, but he's going into some interesting dicey, dicey territory there. He's talking about the hall of fame and some frustrations and the fighters and their place in the companies. I mean, interesting stuff. But again, like I said last week, I would be down to see that fight. I think Alex would be down to see that fight. I think most people ultimately would be down to see that fight. If there was ever a time to make that fight, it was now because there was no other rightful number one contender just waiting in the wings once Max was forced to withdraw. I don't see anyone really campaigning against it. But you you see, I mean, like, we know Dana by now. You know when he is annoyed. You know when he is holding on to a grudge or, or feeling a certain way. You know when he's not going to, like, like, they could bend the rules. They could do whatever they want. And they could spin it whichever way they want. I mean, they could sit here and make a very good case for Connor to fight Oliveira next. And everyone would eat it up and watch it. There, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no third party. It's the Wild West. And so I get it. So Hudo probably feels like, hey man, two division champion, Olympic gold medalist, let me cut the line. And historically, we have seen people cut the line. Connor didn't have a fight at 155. George didn't have a fight at 185. And everyone loved those fights. But I think he's finding out that you can't leave him high and dry. And, you know, he's just not that draw. And that sucks. I think if he came back on the show, the draw, you know, the interest would rise a little bit. But, you know, what can we say? This one, come on. I mean, kind of. Last time he was on, you know, I helped him with the Bella Twins. And now, Wow, Aljo Hill, he's here early? Is that what I'm reading? That's cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, yeah, no problem. If he's here, you could bring him on. So interesting times at 135, uh, interesting times at 145. Of course, we've got the heavyweight title on the line. Uh, it is pay-per-view fight week, UFC 270. 125 title on the line, Brandon Moreno, Davis Figueredo, of course, the big one, Francis Ngannou, Cyril Ghan. I heard Dana say on Saturday in the post-fight press conference, no mention of uh, Phil's past. 
on Saturday in the post fight press conference. I was I was looking for it, but no mention. But I did hear uh, him say something like, "This is this is you know a promoter's dream." Vince couldn't even script this. Yes, the former training partners, uh, you know, Cyril from France. Uh, Francis moved to France. Now they split up. I mean, like the whole backstory is great for the heavyweight title. He didn't mention this part, but the contract as well makes it supremely interesting, right? If Francis loses on Saturday, he can walk away as a free agent. If he wins, he'll have to stay till the end of the year, but he's already saying like, I ain't fighting unless I get a new deal. So I'm either sitting out now that could get dicey as well, um, you know, with the champions clause and the extending of the contract, but they believe and they, they've said that they have looked over the contract in-house and independently that come December 31st, 2022, regardless of how many fights he's had this year, regardless of everything else, they believe that they are free agents. They believe that they can move on come December 31st, 2020, 2022. That would be insane. That's never happened before. That would be that would be Ric Flair showing up with the NWA title. That would be Alundra Blaze, aka Medusa, showing up on Nitro with the WWF belt. You get my point? So there is so much at stake here. And the one thing I would say, or I'd say a few things about the fight, Surreal Gan is a tremendous fighter. And his sort of laissez-faire attitude about everything and not really being involved in the feud is going to serve him very well. It's almost like he's oblivious to it all. And I know part of that is, you know, what he's saying in the public. Of course he knows what's going on. And of course he wants to win for his team and his head coach. But I think he's handling it very well. He's young. He's supremely talented. He's relatively still new to the game. He's supremely athletic. I mean, this is a great fighter who's going to be around for a very long time. John Jones doesn't want to fight Cyril Gunn. That's not a great matchup. Now, what's super interesting about this is historically when we see situations like this where it feels like someone isn't just preparing to fight an opponent, there's a lot on his mind or her mind. There's a lot on their shoulders. It doesn't bode well. When it feels like you're fighting everyone, the machine, the system, the promotion, the fans, uh, the coach, the, the promoter, every, if you're the media, if it feels like you're fighting too many people, it doesn't seem to bode well. I mean, I remember when we saw Tony Ferguson return against Charles Oliveira. It felt like he was fighting everyone. And we've seen countless examples of this. It does not bode well. And so I hope for Francis's sake, clear mind, full heart, can't lose. Steal a phrase from Friday Night Lights. But you know what I'm saying? He can't go in there feeling like he is fighting the UFC. He can't go in there feeling like he is fighting for all the frustrations of the past what is it, nine months, 10 months? He can't go in there feeling like he has to you know, hit a home run because he needs to get that big contract. In fact, I would say that probably, that mindset probably hurt Giga in this fight on Saturday. All the talk about title shot. Let me go in there. Let me knock this guy's head off. Let me hit a grand slam and look what happened. Didn't work out. Francis needs to go in there calm, cool, and collected and everything else will take care of itself on the back end of that fight. If he wins, if he wins, he has a tremendous amount of leverage, a tremendous amount of power. He will hopefully get what he wants. And I would also argue if he loses, I still foresee a scenario where he stays. There's still a lot. He loses to Cyril Gunn. There, I mean, and especially depending on how he loses, if it's a decision or something like that, there's a lot of value in Francis Ngannou. There is still a ton of value in Francis Ngannou. So Francis will be fine. Of course, everything will be different if he wins as opposed to loses. Francis will be fine. This isn't the end of, he's not fighting for his career. He's not fighting for any of that type of stuff, but he is fighting for leverage. He is fighting for that big payday. And you just hope that he is not fighting everyone on Saturday. He is not fighting the man, the promoter, the media, because historically, more often than not, it does not bode well when you've got all that going on in your mind all that on your shoulders, all that frustration. Fascinating fight. Rarely have we seen these fights in UFC history. Former training partners, now foes, you know, we always were asking about the Josh Koscheck, John Fitch fight back in the day. That's when they were teammates. 
Roy McDonald, George St. Pierre, that's when they were teammates. Of course, the one that never happened, which is somewhat of a shame, TJ Dillashaw and Uriah Faber never came to fruition. It's very rare to see this, especially at this level, right? Especially at the very top for the heavyweight championship. And golly, let's hope we get more than one heavyweight title fight in 2022. It has been a long, long time. I mean, the last time we got one was, what, three years ago, four years ago? when DC fought Stipe in July, and then he fought Derek Lewis, and that one kind of came together really quickly. It's been a long time since we've had more than one heavyweight title fight in a calendar year. And so hopefully we're getting this fight, you know, January 22nd, we'll, uh, we'll get a second one at some point, and hell, maybe a, a third one. That would be fun as well. I can't wait for that fight. I can't wait for the Figueredo uh, versus Moreno fight. I thought... Um, I thought it was interesting to hear uh, Dana say on Saturday that, you know, they're not in charge of the pay-per-view price hike. Did feel a little bit like, you know, the old Reebok excuse, you know, like Reebok's the one that won't let Arjun Buller come out with the turban, of course, but he is right about something. I mean, they, they, they obviously, I would be very surprised if they don't have some kind of say in all of this, but he is right about this. ESPN did buy the rights exclusively to the pay-per-views here in America. And so ultimately they could do whatever they want. Can they sell it for $30 as opposed to 75 I mean, I suppose. But remember, the fighters get a cut of the pay-per-view, at least the champions. So their cut would be affected. That's why it's not as simple as, hey, they could do whatever they want and we're going to do whatever we want. Like it, No, there's a great relationship there. Um, they weren't blindsided by this. So a bit of a passing of the buck. Uh, it's not the best pay-per-view on paper. And I've seen some fans complain about that. I saw a, a crazy stat here from Mike Bond. Let me pull this up, uh, which was, I thought, very telling of the pay-per-view. This is Mike Bond of MMA Junkie UFC 270. He has eight fighters set to make their UFC debut, the most on a pay-per-view slash numbered card since UFC 180 in November of 2014. I remember that one. That was in Mexico. There were a lot of tough fighters on that one. The eight debuts are most for a UFC show overall since UFC Fight Night 157 in August of 2019, which also had eight. Eight debuts on a pay-per-view is a lot. There are some good names here and some familiar names. Kay Hansen, Matt Frivola, Trevin Giles, Hidolfo Vieira, Cody Stamen, Saeed Nurmagomedov, Michel Pajeda. But yes, it is it is lacking. And then, of course, there's the Ilya Taporia fight, which was probably the third most interesting fight on the card because uh, he is an absolute stud, undefeated, 11-0, coming off that knockout of Ryan Hall, prior to that knockout of Damon Jackson, He was supposed to fight Mofsar, Evloev, Evloev withdrew, but it seems like we're going to get Charles Jourdain uh, in there, the Canadian Air Jourdain, um, and uh, he is coming off a decision win over Andre Ewell back in December. So to me, a card like this, two massive title fights at the top, the trilogy, Figueredo, Moreno, really curious to see how Figueredo looks in this fight, how the weight cut goes. I saw the picture of him, which I posted on Twitter. He looks absolutely shredded. He looks incredible. Holy smokes. He looks shredded. And then Moreno in his first title defense. So that's big. And then the main event is tremendous. Like I know, the 75 sucks. It's not great. And especially you've got Izzy and Whitaker. You got Izzy and Whitaker in three weeks. It's not even like a full month later, right? February 12th, 22 to 29, 29th. Yeah, that's three weeks later. That's a lot to ask of your fan base. In addition to Plus, in addition to DAZN, um, if you're a boxing fan, right? In addition to Showtime, Cable, if you want to watch any of this stuff as well. It's a lot. I get it. I get it. I would say, though, those two title fights at the top are tremendous. That is that is big-time stuff. And I've seen some people say, like, hey, you know, they're not promoting Francis, and they're not promoting this card to hurt Francis, pay-per-view points and all this stuff. 
And I, I don't really see much difference, to be honest. Like, this is just the way it goes. It goes week to week. Unless there's a big gap, unless there's a long layoff, it's pretty much week to week. You're not going to hear a ton about it. I mean, you'll see some tweets here and there, but you're not going to see anything out of the norm. Again, remember, the pay-per-view's already sold, so it's on ESPN to go out there. And so maybe this, you know, this evening, Monday Night Football, there's the weird playoff game, first time ever, Cards and Rams. I'm assuming you'll see some commercials. That would make sense. If I were them, I would do a quick spot during halftime. How many people are going to be watching that? So we'll see. Before compl- like the promotion really starts Monday. No one's buying pay-per-views early. No one's buying them on Tuesday. But, you know, everyone's buying them on Saturday, maybe Friday. No one's buying it on Thursday or Wednesday. But the promotion starts today for this, right? Coming off a relatively thin card. Promotion starts today. Let's see what they do between now and, and Saturday. Let's see if they promote Cyril more than Francis. I would say tonight's football game, Monday Night Football, ESPN, ABC, Cards, Rams, first one in history, the numbers are going to be through the roof. Let's see how much attention is paid to that fight. And let's see if it's weighted more towards Cyril than Francis. It shall be telling. For now, though, let us move along to our next guest and say hello to the reigning defending UFC bantamweight champion. So we thought it was going to go down in March. It's now going down April 9th. It's Al Jermaine Sterling, who, of course, is going up against his good friend and, uh, of course, bitter rival. Here's Aljo, Funk Master himself. Oh, there he is. Wow, look at those guns. Dang. Shred it. They don't make them like this anymore, Ariel. No, they don't. They don't make them like this anymore. Look at you. Uh, well, thank you for joining us as always. How are we feeling? How we? I mean, we, we look good. It looks like you are in tremendous shape. It looks like you could fight this weekend, Aljo. You're shredded. I don't even want to show you the abs. I'm not even going to show you the abs. I don't want to do that to the viewers. No, you can. But I'm, I'm ready mean, to go, man. We're PG over here. I'm telling you that much. I saw that <laughs> video that you posted of you doing like the, the guitar thing. You were looking shredded when you posted that, whenever that was, like a week ago or so. Yeah, yeah. When they announced that the uh, fight was going to be pushed back. Um, I was, I'm in great shape right now, man. And it, it's unfortunate once again the fight gets pushed back and I have to take my foot off the gas the same way when we had the first fight for yep. December 12th that Jan pulled out for three weeks before the fight, he pulls, he pulls out for personal reasons, whatever that means. <laughs> I'll let the viewers let their imaginations run wild. Cause I don't know what that means. He had his visa. The UFC told me he was injured. He wasn't injured cause he was working out and he sent me a video on Instagram, a voice note, pretty much saying he wants to fight with me, but we can't fight right, right, right now. I don't know what the hell that means. So unless he's on the, the extra supplements, Uh-oh. I don't know, that good old acai. Um, it's, just, it's just annoying to have to get into shape and then have to figure out a way to pull it back the right way and time it right so that yeah. you're not overtraining or you don't get bumps and bruises here and there so that you can have a, a good training camp, you know? So here we are again, April 9th. So you were told March 5th, right? Initially you were yeah, prepared yeah, for so. And what was the reason that you were given as to why it got moved to April 9th? I was told that he wasn't vaccinated. This is what I was told. For real? So then I go out and I say this, and then Jan, he, he decides to chime in. And listen, I respect his stance on the vaccination thing. Like, it should be your choice. No one should be telling us to get mandates that we have to do this with our bodies or have to do this with our kids. That's just absurd. This is a free country. You're supposed to have freedom of choice, and the doctors are supposed to give you all the education to, that you should know to make an educated deci- decision on whether or not you want to do that. So if that was really the case, I respect the stance. But at the same time, I knew he wasn't going to be vaccinated a month later. So I, I knew that didn't really make a lot of sense. So I only said what was told to me. And he said he is vaccinated. So I, I don't know. I don't really care. I just would have liked to have fought here in, in Vegas. That would have been a lot nicer. But Jacksonville, Florida, Vegas, his backyard, my backyard. I don't really give a shit. I just want to get my hands on this guy and just shut this man up and all these stupid clown emojis. I can't wait to turn the world upside down on his head. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a pretty day for myself and I'm going to be so petty. So petty. <laughs> I, I would be surprised. I mean, I can't imagine everyone who's fighting in Vegas is vaccinated. Um, no, I, would, I would be surprised. Not, if that I, was... I think at least 50% of us aren't. Right. You know, so. At least. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's not a, it doesn't, the, the reason it didn't make any sense to me, I think they just want to keep both title fights together, which is yeah. fine. Just tell us that. Like, don't tell us he's not vaccinated. And I say it. And then he's like, no, I am vaccinated. What are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know. Now, uh, of course, 
another friend of yours, Sean O'Malley, came out and is like, hey, the reason why they moved it is because they couldn't headline on their own. How do you feel about those comments? I, O'Malley's going to do what O'Malley does, which is just talk. You know, he talks a big game, but we we come to find out that he's a lot of talk, a lot of bark, and no bite. You know, the last time he he tried to bite off more than he can chew, what happened? He he did the broke leg dance, you know? So uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what he's on. And again, like, I know that was a kick that could have, Never had had that impact, but it did. And guess what? You had your shot and you blew it. We all get opportunities. You had an opportunity, you blew it. So if you want to say Paiva is the guy that should give everyone more hype around him again, I don't know, man. Like the UFC didn't give me those opportunities to fight tailor-made matchups when I came up. I fought my third UFC fight. I fought a guy who was ranked six in the world in Takei Mizugaki. And ever since then, I have not left the UFC's top 10 to, in the, the UFC's top 10 of ranked contenders and uh, guys that were, th- were within the top 10 and top five. So, Amali, if you want to keep talking like this, step up to the plate and fight somebody. I don't want to say good, but fight someone that's a contender, a real contender. You know what I mean? So we can see how, how good he really is. I mean, Ricky Simone's been calling him out. marab has been calling him out. Mm. A lot of guys have been calling him out. Kelleher's been calling him out. Fight somebody, bro. Fight somebody. Uh, did you... I don't know, you, your management say like, hey, why don't we just stay on this card? Like put put us in the main or put us, you know, if they, if they want to go with Colby and Jorge, put us in the co-main and uh, that way we don't have to extend this drama and this rivalry another month. Was that brought up at all? No, not not to me at least. And I, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. I, I do think Amali had a point in, in possibly saying that maybe we probably couldn't headline a card by ourselves, but that's not on us. That's on the UFC to put together a fight card that was worthy of customers wanting to pay a $70 price tag to pay for. I, I think that's pretty black and white. You can't just rely on one fight to be the main fight for. I, I mean, I don't know a lot of people who's going to pay $70 just to watch one fight. I, I usually when I pay 75, I now. watch 75, by the way, got just, it 75. just got, it just you know, got bumped. I, I, yeah, so I want to watch good fights. I don't want to just watch one fight. Like when I, when it comes to boxing, they just have Canelo versus whoever. Yeah, I'm I'm paying to pretty much see Canelo. Right, but that's a big price tag to pay to just to see one fight, and I can't. You can't justify doing that for that and doing that for this. So it's got to be a little bit more to the to the, to the metrics. It can't just be one person. I'm pretty sure if it was just Sean O'Malley and a bunch of other guys that are up and coming, not really any type of notoriety. People aren't paying $75 to watch Sean O'Malley fight either. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about in that regards. If the UFC puts together a great card with top 10 fights and matchups that mean something, people are going to pay, you know? So it doesn't matter who's really headlining. The UFC is the UFC. If, if it's a good fight card, people are going to pay to tune in to watch it. And uh, it, that would have been cool to stay here in March, but I, I like being on the car with Volkanovski and whoever else is going to be. I think it's Korean Zombie right now. So I think that's going to be a good car regardless. How's the neck? How are we feeling? The arms? Is everything 100%? Dude, I'm A1. If if they had just given me a little bit more time earlier, we could have possibly been on this car this weekend. You know, so. Wow. It is a little frustrating. Um, I was hoping to make that one-year anniversary to pretty much the same way I did with the uh, Pedro Munoz fight to the Corey Sanhagen fight when I had my wrist surgery. I had two procedures on my wrist. Um, for that torn ligament. And uh, Dr. Robert Watkins Jr. did a great job with the neck and um, gave me back to 100% the USCPI team. And I, I feel good. I, I feel like we finally did things the right way. We took our time. We let the body heal up from a neurological standpoint and we're good to go. I, I did four rounds of sparring the other day. That felt really good. Did three rounds on a Saturday at the USCPI's cage. And I want to say probably the fifth kick or fourth kick that I threw, I fell on my ass. Wow. In the octagon, same exact canvas. I'm like, what a coincidence. And as I get taken down, well, I didn't get taken. I, I fell and I go, this fucking cage is trash, yeah. trash. It's so annoying. Like you throw, you throw a head kick and you just like, zook, like someone just pulled the rug from underneath your feet. But um, what's wrong I, with I got some things to make a couple adjustments for that going forward. And um, hopefully we don't have too much of that going into this rematch. Cause I'm very kick heavy. And I think most people know that. Um, but other than that, I feel good, man. The cardio condition is on point. The mental is on point. I just can't wait to just shut everybody up. How do you uh, how do you combat that? Because we have seen some slippage uh, as of late. How do you combat that? Um, there's some things you could put on your feet. Okay, to give you a little bit more traction. Uh, sometimes the UFC staff or whatever, when you're pouring, or the commission when you're pouring water in the octagon, if you pour too much, they 
tend to take a towel to dry it up, even though it's going to dry regardless. Right. Um, so I like to pour it, spread it out liberally on the canvas so that whenever we go in, if I'm circling around the perimeter, I could step my foot in that little, not I don't want to say puddle, but that little yeah. wet spot to kind of get a little bit more traction on your feet because it's not like, it's not like a basketball court where you're, you're trying to hit like quick crossovers, juke moves and things like that. This is like being able to stop on a dime and pivot. So if you're throwing a head kick and you're sliding, you lose the, you, with the inertia, you lose your footing. If you're going for a takedown and you start to TP and try to drive your shoulder into someone's chest, your feet slide underneath you. The decals do help a little bit. That was one of the things we, we found out at the PI. We tested a couple of things and um, that, that's going to be one of the things that we look for. Make sure that we're, we have the decal under our feet so that we can get a little bit more friction so that we can pin the guy there like we do in the cage. And, and the cages that we train in, the canvas is just different. So we're able to really set our feet. And once we pin you there, it's really, really hard to get off the cage. And I can literally keep people there for an entire round if I want to, you know? So um, I'm, I'm just excited, man. There's a lot of takeaways from the first fight, but the first fight is not going to be nothing like the second. And I think if people remember my last performances before that, um, before my Academy, Academy Award-winning performance, um, March 6th of last year, uh, people can remember that I'm still a top contender in this division and I didn't get here by accident. I didn't get, I didn't have to beat Uriah Faber to get a vacant, to fight for a vacant title against a guy who's coming off of a loss. You know, the, the UFC doesn't make sense sometimes, but it's their company. They're going to do what they want to do. Um, when I fought Corey Sanhagen, everyone was saying that should have been for the undisputed title because we were the two highest ranked guys coming off of the two highest ranked wins in the division, not fighting people coming off of losses. And uh, instead they gave it to the popularity contest for Jan and Jose Aldo. So it is what it is. I think people are starting to see that Sin Hagen is a real deal, even though he's had some tough losses. They see Jan is a real deal as well. And it's no, there's no like, um, what would you call it? Um, there's no coincidence. It's not luck that we all got to mm -hmm. where we're supposed mm -hmm. to be, you know, because uh, I think um, the cream is always going to rise to the top, you know, so, and, and I think that's pretty much where we're at. So I, I do know that Jan's a good, he's a great competitor, but at the end of the day, man, this is a fist fight we're talking about. And two guys are going to go in there. One guy's going to come out the winner. And that guy is going to be me. How tired are you of, of thinking about this guy? And it's not just like, it has to be exhausting, right? Cause it's not just talking about him, thinking about him, the fans. I mean, the, the, the Instagram, the comment, like, is this, isn't that part of the motivation here to just kind of move on from your life with this guy? At some point you have to move on, right? This is, we're talking like once you beat, you beat Sanhagen in June of 2020, and then he won in July of 2020, right? That's when it's been almost now. We are going to approach two years by the time this fight happens in April, right? Three months shy of two years of you guys like like this. And everything has obviously elevated in the last year. It's got to be exhausting, right? Oh, 100%. I, it's not exhausting in, in the sense of like... Like the the fight matchup, like that fight's always gonna be good. Jan versus Sterling is always gonna be a good fight. Jan versus San Hagen, myself versus San Hagen, it's always gonna be a fun fight. It's exhausting with all the talk because we can't compete against each other. We've been delayed so many times. He's delayed the fight the very first time. And then we had the fight. The guy's a moron. He gives me a, a golden ticket to get a chance to redo it. Here we are. Um, I got rushed back into a fight to accept the fight. Um, no one put a gun to my head, yes, but. I wasn't in quite a, a position to say, no, I'm not ready yet because they were under the impression that I could take a training camp. But the doctor said I should have waited till after October to start a training camp, not fight in, in October. You know, so I, I cut my rehab short, had to pull out of the fight. Um, I know they had the obligations to Abu Dhabi to give them two title fights. So they made the interim title fight and I'm all for everybody getting paid. I love that Jan is actually going to get pay-per-view points. I'm so happy for him in that regards. I think all fighters should be getting paid, you know? So it's cool that we both get to share the pay-per-view points, you know? So that's cool. Um, being an interim champ, he gets pay-per-view points. Myself being a champ, uh, and undisputed champ, undefeated, never lost a round. I get pay-per-view points as well. Um, so I, I'm just I'm just ready to move on to the next chapter of my career. I want to take out Peter Jan in spectacular fashion, move on to TJ uh, Needleshaw, take him out, then take on the King of Rio, take him out, and just continue to build my legacy. And uh, I think that's where I'm at right now. You know, it, it's just been a long time coming. I, I've worked so hard. I've been in the UFC since 2014 in February. You know, I, I've, like I said, my third UFC fight, I've been fighting nothing but ranked guys ever since then. I haven't gone backwards. 
So no one can ever discredit anything I've done. And you look at all my fights leading up to the belt, I never dropped a round. I haven't dropped a round. Jan has actually dropped rounds before, you know? So I, I know what it is. People can say whatever they want because they've seen that fight. I know the reasons for that, for why I performed that way. And it's one little, one little twist and everything's back in order. And then we could finally figure out who's really the king of the division and just move on. I saw you uh, training with Thug Nasty. Bryce Mitchell. Now I have two questions about that. Number one, first time that you guys trained together? No, no. I remember he came out to New York and he stayed with us at Ally Quintus house. Really? And uh, When was that? Yeah, he was like hunting down some raccoons, some Long Island raccoons. And I never really understood him back then. I was like, this cat is strange, man. We don't do that type of shit around here. Yes. That's, not, that's not what we do. Wait, wait, wait. But, when uh, was this? And did you guys film that? I mean, Bryce Mitchell on Long Island shooting raccoons feels like incredible content well we didn't film him shooting raccoons but i, mean, I don't it. know if that would be actually okay <laughs> to post but <laughs> but i think that was back in 2016 2015 for sure because i had just moved in with ally quinta so i had just fought mizugaki so about 2016 because he wasn't wow. in the ufc yet okay so that was a couple years ago um myself morale we all got to train with him and he was really good back then undefeated um he's still undefeated right if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah, that's what I thought. And um, Doug Nasty is good, man. We had some good drilling sessions. I posted some content with us training, and yeah. uh, I didn't want to post too much, but I wanted to give people like a sneak peek preview of like just like the type of way I like to train. And um, I think it's been very beneficial for me because that's kind of what has helped me progress as fast as it has. Because I feel like I take a lot from the Thai style of fighting and sparring because they spar very, very light, whereas more so touch sparring as opposed to really trying to take each other out. Some guys, man, they play rock and sock and robots in there. And I, I'm not about that. That's mm -hmm. I, I want to have longevity. And that's why I think I was able to even withstand those type of strikes from Jan in that third and fourth round, because I, I'm in great shape and I haven't taken that many shots to the head. So uh, I don't want to use up too many of those, but um, training with Bryce was really good. We got to get some, a couple of uh, live grappling rounds in. That was fun. Very, very competitive and some good scrambles. That I think people would have enjoyed. And, uh, it, it was cool. Just chopping it up with him, catching up and talking some real estate and some things like that too. Uh, did you happen to check out his, uh, his rap skills by any chance? I only heard that one song that you posted. Yeah. And then I got, I, I listened to that one. Not um, bad, right? Darker Saw was really good. Darker Saw is tremendous, but I mean, the kids got skills, right? You could see from the one song. Yeah. yeah. It was weird. Cause people were like, some people were giving him praise and some people was kind of throwing shade like, oh, he's not that good. I'm like, come on. So what is good? What is good rap? Yeah. Because I, I guess I don't know what good rap is. If you got a good flow, you actually make some sense. There's some consistency in like what you're talking about. I think it's good. I mean, not everyone's going to be like Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. You know what I mean? But uh, I think, I mean, for what it is rap these, this day in history, I think it's pretty damn good in comparison to what we've heard in the past. You know, so um, I think he, I think he might give Willie a run for his, <laughs> I think he might give Willie a run for his oh. money. Well, you're not, you're not a big uh, T-Wood fan. I, th I thought, I thought, I saw, no, I mean, I'm a big T-Wood fan. The, the, I'm a fan. I think he gives him a run for his money. The song that you sang, do we have the song from his uh, Instagram? The one that you sang while holding the belt as a guitar was kind of like, I'll beat your ass. It was like a remix. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right? Yeah. You know, I didn't realize that until afterwards. Oh, okay. Someone said the last time someone sung that song. You know the the streak they went on. I said I thought that was, I was like, huh, but someone else's uh, fortunes is not going to be my own. You know, sure, so sure, sure. I don't I don't let that dictate my my own my own life. Uh, <laughs> it is amazing. I mean, I, honestly, I I really do uh, I really do think that he's good. I really do think that he has skills. Like no one would have thought Bryce Mitchell could sing like that. Um, I also saw you in uh, Georgia. Uh, you posted some of the stuff from there. Can we take a quick look at this? Because uh, I saw you getting down with your bad self. We have that clip of uh, Aljo and Georgia dancing. I mean, I have to say, yeah, here it is. Look at you guys go. We're, we're showing it right now. I mean, wow. What a scene this is over there. <laughs> you got. I, I see you on the horse. You got the animals there. They love you over there in Georgia. Not the state, the country. <laughs> The Republic of Georgia is a great place, man. We had a great time. Marab showed us around. He had he gave us pretty much a hero's welcoming. Um, he's like the president over there, man. No matter where we went, Guamajoba, Guamajoba, everyone stopping, taking pictures with him. 
great dude. His people love him. His village is great. Uh, we went to his house and it was, I feel like there was like 50 people there and nonstop drinking wine. And I had to tell him like, bro, you can't have us going to do these seminars and training with these, with the students and having us drinking right, wine right, before right. and then the wine after and then wine in the morning. Like, cause he doesn't drink. So Al and I were like, oh. dude, this is too much. Like I'm not recovering cause we're not sleeping. But outside of that, man, he made us do so much in such a short amount of time. It was great. Like I was like inspired to to want to explore Long Island more because of that. I'm like, man, I feel like I haven't really seen Long Island because look how much of the country I've seen in such a short amount of time versus I've lived in Long Island my entire life. I could only tell you about a couple of things and a couple right. of places. So that that kind of gave a little motivation to start getting out more and, and doing some more outdoorsy things and sightseeing, that type of stuff. Will you go back to Long Island for this camp or is it all going to be in uh, in Vegas? So so now that the camp was, the fight was moved back again an extra four weeks, I had to kind of make another adjustment because I had planned out how many weeks I was going to be in Vegas and then finishing up in Long Island and coming back to Vegas. But now I'm actually going home this weekend and then coming back to Vegas for two weeks and then going to kind of jumpstart things again and then go back to Long Island, finish up, and then make the flight down to Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Is that where it's looking like it's going to happen? That's that's what I was told. Um, I'm actually really excited about going there. I, I've never fought in Florida before. Mm. I've mostly fought in like New, New York as an amateur, um, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and obviously Vegas, Kansas City. So this is going to be cool. California. It's going to be cool to get down to somewhere else and... Um, April 9th, the weather should be great too. So yeah. maybe get a couple of beach workouts while we're trying to lose weight for the fights or some stuff like that. So um, I'm excited to get out there and and meet the people of Jacksonville. I heard it's a great city, so I'm looking forward to it. Is there any chance that you get to fight in your home state before your career is over or is that dream is that dream dead? Uh, I, I don't know. And at this point, honestly, the amount of the, the kind of the, and I'm not one into superstitions, but the luck that our fighters have had it is in New crazy. York, I'm kind of like, yeah, it's crazy. I'm kind of like, huh? Yeah, no. it's 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 wild. So it's yeah. like, do I really care to fight in New York? I mean, I would love to because the ambiance would be unreal, be memorable. But if I was a superstitious person, I'd be like, no, no way, no way yeah. can I fight there, you know? But it would be cool to have like everyone I know to come out and uh, make a short drive down from upstate New York, coaches, family, teammates, and stuff. Um, and obviously it's the, it's, it's the Mecca, you know, so not the fight capital like Las Vegas, but it's the Mecca, it's the Big Apple. You know, there's a lot of places, a lot of people's, the melting pot, you know, it would be great to have at least one fight there before my career is all said and done. And uh, who knows when that's going to be, but I, you know, I don't plan to fight until I'm 40, you know, so hopefully they figure it out. And, and it's, it's what I was told from the commission is literally the doctor coming in and making one change in the rule book, the medical rule book, and I'm good to go. And a couple other fighters would be good to go as well. So Hopefully they can figure that out, man, because we can make some good money together. Okay, so you said you're not going to go till 40. Uh, right now we are 32, turning 33 in July. So realistically, when do you want to go? Like if in a perfect world? I'm getting old, man. I had originally said when I first started MMA, I thought I was going to be a champ by like 24. And then I was going to retire at 32. Wow. And uh, yeah. And now hearing I'm 32, I'm like, yeah, I'm not done yet. Yeah, of course. I feel like I got so much more left in the tank. I got so much more I want to do. And getting my neck fixed, it, it gave me like a fresh lease on my athletic career. Like, I feel like all the things that I was talking about in terms of the pain and things that I was walking around with, it's all gone now. So I almost feel like I could do it even longer if I really, really wanted to. But it gets to a point where you compete so much. I've been competing since 10th grade in high school as a wrestler, cutting weight week after week in college. I mean, now I'm not doing it as much. I, I don't know what that year is going to be, but at some point I would like to start a family and I would like to be able to make sure I can spend time with my family. And uh, it would be cool to obviously be an athlete while I have kids so that they can enjoy that, that limelight um, aura, so to speak. But if I think if I do the right thing and, and win the fights that I should win, um, especially this one, I, you know, winning this fight, I think is going to make me, in terms of a, a draw, a superstar, whatever words you want to use, adjective to describe it, I think it's going to put me over that hump in a, in a very big way. And um, I think the kids would benefit from just that, you know? So it's all about what I do in the future and, and we can control our future. The same thing with like, even like Calvin Cater, like I wrote him off as well. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's a fist fight, man. Anything can happen when you get in there. 
And people that try to set things in stone, like nothing can happen. Like every dog has a day, every squirrel finds his nut. And um, I truly think just on paper, if you look on just paper alone, I think my stats are better than Piotr Jan's. And I like my chances with that, with a little bit of hard work, some good opportunity, April 9th. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good night for myself. By the way, this may be a little inside, but I, I remember um, they posted a picture. I think it was the ESPN MMA account posted a picture of you guys when the fight was first reported and you didn't have the belt and everyone got mad about that. And then I looked it was on my waist. It was on your waist, but I looked on Getty and because I think you were rushed to the hospital, like you didn't get that photo shoot that you guys get after the fight, right? Like you don't have those official photos with the belt. Does that bother you? Ariel, I would not have taken a fo- I would not have done a photo shoot after that fight. Right. No, I know. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you guys go to the back yeah. and you take photos, you win the belt, whatever, yep. you have a big win. Those pictures don't exist. So like the only picture of you with the belt around your waist is the one where like it looks like you're in pain, like where he's he's raising your hand. I, I just I'm pretty much crying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't want to say like it looked like you were emotional, but I, I didn't. I didn't know if that bothers you because I saw people getting mad on your behalf. People had your back like, hey, where's the belt? Where's the belt? So I, I was wondering how you thought about that or how you felt about that. Yeah. So even like before, during fight week, we take our photos and going into the title fight, which I just found out about. Like, oh, yeah. Obviously in the last fight, they make us take pictures before mm-hmm. the fight with the belt, just in case you win kind of thing. Um, so I think they've been using some of those pictures. Um, but yeah, after the fight, I, I had... That, that, that night's a big blur for me, man. It, 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 that's probably the only thing that really rubs me wrong when people say, like, I, I was faking. Like, dude, you can't fake memories. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't remember a lot of the stuff that happened. So it's just like, that's the only thing that really, really, like, irks me. And then I have to kind of remind myself, like, these people are just freaking, uh, there's, just, there's just crazy people out there. And they know it all, you know? So at the end of the day, we all know those type of people. And usually no one likes them, you know? So... Um, yeah, but other than that, I, did, I would never have taken a, done, normally you do a victory lap, you go in the back after you win, you go to the back, you take pictures, you know, not a lot of people would know about this because, you know, we actually do it. And, um, when you go back there, you get to enjoy the moment, fruits of your labor, you go there, you take pictures with yourself, um, for, with your teammates, if you want to, um, I've done this multiple times with Marab, Ally, Quinta, Chris Weidman, um, all the guys from the team type of thing. So after that fight, even if I wasn't as in bad shape as I was and I wasn't going to the hospital, there was no way you were going to get me to, to take pictures with the belt after that type of performance, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, like I said before, man, the fight with Corey Sanhagen and I should have been for the belt to begin with. So I always viewed myself as a champion. I always said I, I was defending my belt against Piotr Jan. So um, the fight went the way he did, and now we get to do it again, and, and that's really it. And perfect scenario, this fight happens April 9th, and then it seems like TJ is the guy that you would want. Do you think he should fight someone else in between now and then? Or? No, I, I, I would I, I would like to fight TJ. You know, he's one of the guys like a Dominic Cruz who's been around forever. Everyone mm-hmm. knows who he is. He's one of the, I want to say the grandfathers of the division. Um, he made the division what it is, him, himself, Burrell. Uh, I fought Burrell. He fought Burrell. was the second guy to beat Burrell outside of TJ. <clears throat> then you have um, Dominic Cruz, who is the guy outside of Uriah Faber. Um, but Dominic Cruz was the guy for 135 and then coming into the UFC 135. So he's the most winningest guy, including his WC wins. Um, that's the guy I'm, I'm chasing in terms of legacy and, and cementing my names on the all-time wins list. Uh, but I, I, I would love to fight TJ. And it's just kind of a joke. Like the whole USADA thing, man, it, it, it's kind of laughable because it wasn't even USADA that caught TJ. It was the athletic commission, the New York athletic commission. What are we paying USADA to do? Is this just like a, a front to just kind of like remove all liabilities? Like say, hey man, we, we're third party. This is the third party that we pay to test our guys. We have no accountability for this because I, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me because I'm like, all these guys in these other countries, I don't think they're being tested as much as we're being tested. Mm. And I do think, and people could, people could tell me I'm crazy. I've watched Icarus. I, I've always had my suspicions about things. This sport was kind of founded on like being prideful of, yeah, I'm, I'm Jack, I'm a monster. Look at the back of the days that like what people used to look like, the Sean Shirks, the, 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 it, I, you know, I don't want to disparage anyone's name, but we, we got to know who's who the, the Belfords, we, we know what's up. So to me, to, to try to tell me and convince me that people aren't still doing stuff. If you saw the can't catch TJ Dillshaw, who 
actually been outed by Cody Garbrandt in a press conference. And USADA doesn't think, huh, maybe we should look into this. Because Garbrandt said he was the one showing people at the gym how to do it. Nothing happened after that. But the athletic state of, of, of New York catches TJ Dillashaw. So what, what are they doing? Seriously, what are they doing? And I don't think anyone is going to test from the USADA pool over in, in these other countries, the way that they're testing us. Like in, in the United States, you pop somebody, you pop a John Jones, and you pop everybody else. You're like almost like a hero. Like you get the, the little badge of honor. It's like cool that you caught that guy. But these other guys from these other countries, when they're not being caught, like do you think they're really trying to catch their guy? Like they're people who are pretty much like they're, they're, they're like treated like, royalty they have the red carpet treatment like those smaller countries and russia is not a small country i'm just saying like, those smaller countries they're they just looked at differently it's perceived different like sports is like the ultimate thing for them like when they win the olympics when it's so prideful it's it's so fascinating how different like they're treated when it comes to sports the the life of sports compared to the united states like we're kind of like spoiled we have all these other things it's a great country but we have all these other things so we don't really treat it the way like these other countries do. They're rewarded. Like they are like God sent when they win the Olympics type of thing. So when you have these athletes who are in the top of their sport, you think these guys are really trying to pop their guys? I don't think so. I mean, people could tell me you have no evidence. What? Dude, come on, man. Really? Really? Do I need to have evidence? Like we had evidence with TJ and he still didn't get caught until years later. I know TJ has been cheating pretty much since the beginning of his UFC career. It is what it is. People are cheating still. And I, whatever, man, we've been competing against guys like this and we just got to beat their asses anyway, you know? So at the end of the day, you can't teach heart. And I think, I think cheating is just compensating for your mental weakness and you're not mentally tough enough to, to go through that grind without those things, you know? So it is what it is, man. Mark Hunt does bring up a that good was, point. That was a rant. That was a nah, rant. I appreciate but it. That I, shit bothers me, man. It, it, should. it really does bother me because... You should do jail time for doing steroids or EPO or any type of shit like that in the UFC, in combat sports in general. You can literally rearrange someone's career, their livelihood, doing this contact sport, man. This is not like playing basketball. We're not shooting hoops. We're not hitting a baseball into the, into the crowd. You know what I'm talking about? You know, so you, we're, we're, of course. we're dealing with life-changing events when you step into that octagon. And people will say, the ones that are stupid are going to say, well, no one put a gun to your head and told you to do this. What? How is that? A, how is that a logical comeback to justify those actions? Like wh what? Mark Hunt brings up a good point. We had him on last week where he's like, why, why are the results coming out after the fight? What's the point? Right? What's the point? Yeah. What's the point? Right. Just want to choke somebody. Like for like, <sighs> how often are you tested? Just I just got tested once. I feel like I haven't been tested in like months. That's how I feel. I could I would have to go back and look. I feel like I just got tested last week because I posted a video of it, um, a picture of it with my band-aid on my arm. Oh, right, right. Um, they they finally did blood and uh urine. They don't usually do, do but outside blood? of that, I'm just like sorry? They don't usually do blood? Only if they're testing for I guess steroids. I don't know. Okay. I mean, they don't do blood often, it's usually urine. And I don't know, like even listening to that Joe Rogan podcast with that guy from Derek, Derek, something more plates, more dates or something like that. Dude, it's fascinating. Like all the stuff that I don't even know about. And he's talking about all these benchmarks and things like that, how people could be cheating in these um, micro dosing. I'm like, dude, it's it's crazy. And there's, he's saying that people have doctors that they pay to help them schedule everything the right way. I'm just like, yo, I, I believe it, man. Yeah, I believe exactly. it. It's, it's, I don't know. We're not, we're not Lance Armstrong. We're not riding a bike, bro. We're, we're in a freaking fist fight. And if you can be a little bit more aggressive, you can be a little bit more on point, a little bit more dialed in. That's a, that's a more dangerous person in, in my eyes, you know? So I, that shit should be jail time, bro. Fucking jail time. It should you, be fucking jail time. That shit's fucked up, bro. You did, you mentioned something uh, about Jan. You, you, you think that he's on? Like you said, you don't know, you know, and you made the, the, you know, <sighs> for me, is is I look at him the same way I look at TJ. I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. And when you hear when you hear rumors, it, it is what it is. Like I said, where does smoke this fire, man? You know. So um, I said that about TJ years ago, and it comes out years later that I was right. And again, I, I'm not trying to put dirt on Jan's name, but there's a lot of guys within the UFC that I've competed with, competed against. 
And uh, I, like I said, I just wouldn't be surprised, man. Nothing, none, nothing surprises me anymore. It's just, you just kind of learn how to become numb to it and just kind of deal with it. Like people are going to say, well, why are you bitching about it? It was like, why, why not bitch about it? Mm-hmm, you're yeah. still cheating. I'm still going to make it known that I know you're, I know you're probably cheating. And regardless, I'm still going to get in there with you. And I still think I'm going to beat your ass. That's, that's really it. April 9th. I always love when you come on because you have such a great setup, Aljo. You've got the camera. You've got the microphone. You got the, I mean, your setup is more pro than mine over there. I mean, you've got the belt. You've got everything. I mean, you got the backdrop, though, bro. Yeah, I got the backdrop. <laughs> Although, I mean, were you right? Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but were you writing something before? Did, was there something that I was supposed to prompt you? Or was that for something else? Oh, yeah. I, I had a little... I had a little... Um, yeah. I didn't know. I, I thought, want to get off my chest. Well, I, when I asked you goes, about Bryce, I thought that was like the opening of the door, but you didn't take the door. So uh, what do you have to, what do you want to share? This is just for the fans across the world. <clears throat> you know, it's going down, in fact, in Florida on April 9th. Tune in, tune in. Don't you dare think to miss this fight. The Funk Master, this time showing y'all no mercy. He'll be singing like Hathaway. Baby, don't hurt me. Ooh. What is love? Friendly snub. She ordered, we ain't touching no gloves. When I'm done with you, you'll be wishing to be in the heavens above. Mm. Wow. Was that, was that, I don't know if that was about, was that about Jan or was that about Bryce Mitchell? I feel like that was a subtle sort of call out of Bryce Mitchell. Brian Kelleher, what do you want? Listen, man, all these, all these fake rappers in the That's right. UFC can get it. That's right. <laughs> we need to do a UFC battle rap. We need to do you, Kelleher, yeah. Woodley, uh, uh, Thug Nasty. I don't know who else. Nah, no, no snub to Bryce. No snub okay. to Keller. Keller and I actually used to rap, make rap songs back in the day when we were training partners up really? in New York. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the Bomb Squad days. That was old school vintage stuff, though. But I actually just wrote that before the show. I was like, I actually want to write something for this, for my call out. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Are you going to do, you going to do like an album or something? Is this something you want to do as well? Or? <laughs> you would love that, wouldn't you? I mean, I, listen, I think the fans would love it. If I'm being honest, I think they would really appreciate uh, it. For it, now, it we'll keep fun. it. I, I do want to do one song, like one actual really good song before I'm done being a fighter while I still have like the attention. You know what I mean? Sure. So um, that has always been a, a dream of mine to be a rapper or NFL player or NBA player. Obviously I wasn't big enough to do those other sports. So I defaulted to wrestling. Now I'm a fighter. And I still always want to be kind of a like a rapper kind of thing. But right. I don't know. You still Maybe got to do a couple of features, you know? 100,000 100, for a feature. Hit me up. Okay. <laughs> Slide in the DMs. I'm sure you have a lot of nice people sliding in your DMs. A lot oh, of no. uh, very sane fans. I'm sure it's all very uh, respectful and cordial, right? I mean... They're the worst fans. You do lean into it. I mean, I see you speaking in Russian and stuff like you do. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely leaning into it these days. I mean, this alone is definitely leaning into it. So I feel like you can handle it pretty well. Yeah, yeah. you know what? It, it's fascinating because it, it's so silly that people think that I actually, I, like, I, they know I didn't even post any pictures after the fight. And it was so quick, how quick it was to change. And from... Jan's fake ass apology saying that he was sorry for what he did. He intentionally meant to do that shit. He's a piece of shit kind of person, man. And uh, he's a fucking asshole. Let's call it what it is. He, he meant to do that. He gave a fake ass apology to kind of save face. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope he's okay. And then as soon as someone posted a picture of me at my house with my friends in my own personal private space, he went and flipped the script and started saying I was faking and whatever. And then people started saying the same shit. I'm like, I guess that's, that's how we do things, you know? So once people weren't even listening to what was going on. I was like, fuck you. Guess what? I do have the belt. Guess what? On the rankings, I am the champ. So go fuck yourself. I worked hard to get here. And at the end of the day, you can't do anything to take this away from me. So if you want to do something, come get it back in blood. So Peter, come get it back in blood if you really want to do something. And that's it. Damn, that is a promo. That's a way to end an interview. Can't wait. Uh, April 9th, not March 5th, the rematch. Highly anticipated. Can't wait. Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Jan. Not Peter Jan versus Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Jan, right? Get it right, Ariel. Let That's them right. know. That's Yesterday's right. price is not today's price. Oh, my Yesterday's God. Yesterday's price <laughs> is not today's oh price. <laughs> <laughs> See, Aljo. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. And good luck in training. There he is, Aljamain Sterling, the reigning defending UFC uh, bantamweight champion. That was a good promo. Dare I say a great promo. I like that. That was good stuff. And so it's not happening uh, March 5th. I didn't, I, I guess I'm not surprised about the Jacksonville thing. I didn't hear 
uh, that Jacksonville was a finalist, but you know, Jacksonville opened their doors to the UFC before anyone uh, back in May of 2020, the Cejudo Cruz card, the Ferguson uh, Gaethje card, the first one back, and then they had those subsequent cards. So uh, UFC said that they were going to uh, pay back Jacksonville for their loyalty and uh, they came back last April with that first card with the fans in attendance. And then uh, it seems like they are considering going back in uh, in April, April 9th. I'm wondering when they're going to go back to uh, Tachi Palace. Remember they said they were going to bring a card to Tachi Palace when they were going to do that card in April of 2020. And then they were told to stand down. So hopefully the, uh, the good people of Lemoore, California get a card in the uh in the near future um all right uh later in the program we're going to be joined by alex volkanovsky i guess we're having a little bit of trouble of finding uh michael venom page um but there's still <clears throat> there's still a lot of show left uh, also we're going to uh, be joined by GC. We're going to be joined by New York Rick. I did want to mention something while I have this brief moment here. Uh, before the show, I got this card, this lovely card. You can see it right there. And uh, there's, I guess this is a groundhog. Would this be a groundhog? It's a beautiful card. That's a groundhog, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, it says inside, just a little thank you. Lord Helwani, and when I opened the card, I was like, Lord Helwani, this is interesting. On behalf of Sarah Rose, Amber, Lewis, Judd, Alex Weber, Ian, Ross, Jack, and myself, EK, thank you for all you do, XOXO. You may recognize the vast majority of those names from the On the Nose segment. They are a great group of people, a great group of fans. I was like, wow, this is amazing, a card uh, from, you know, these names that I all know very well and recognize. And I mean, this is great. This is beautiful. So what is this? There was a box. So I was like, what is this? We open the box and then I get this in the mail, in the box, wrapped up very nicely. And then we start reading it, myself, New York Rick, Joe, everyone's reading it. And uh, this is what it is. It's a proclamation. Look how nice this is. I'm a, I'm a lord, everyone. I just want to let you know, breaking news. If we have any breaking news music, dun dun dun, dun you can do the lower third. I am a lord. You all now have to refer to me as such. Thank you for that. It says, whereas Lord Ariel Hawani, hereafter referred to as the lord, so please get it right, has by way of notice this 11th day of December in the year 2021, in the 69th year of the reign of our sovereign Lady Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, delivered unto us the intention to purchase and us with the intention to accept established titles, has agreed with the Lord to bequeath Unto them, a dedication of a plot of land of precisely, get this, five square feet in West Scotland. I'm very big in Scotland. I don't know if you guys know this. I'm massive in Scotland. In particular, the plot of land identified and described with the specific identifying plot number. I think that's an E. I'm not sure what. Yes, E. 0152326 by established titles of a measurement of one foot by five feet. It's a massive piece of land. And here and after referred to as the plot established titles agrees to dedicate the plot in the name of the Lord, me, Lord Helwani on an estate located in, this is, this is the most important part. Arbally, no, Ardily Aberdeenshire. Ardley Aberdeenshire, Scotland, of its choosing, which may be identified altogether or as part of a larger area and form a part of a Merkland or eight ounce lands. And then there's a lot more here. This is a really big deal. I just want to let you all know, breaking news. Uh, I am a lord. Here it is. 
I now, uh, I, I believe, own a piece of land in Scotland. Shout out to the Haggis. Where's, where's the Haggis? Right over there above my shoulder, Haggis country. Shout out to uh, Robert Whiteford, of course, Paul Craig, Joanne Calderwood, Nikki Ash, uh, Drew McIntyre, of course. I'm, I'm very big in Scotland. And uh, this is a huge deal for me. Look at this. I mean, look at that right here. So I want to thank again. I mean, I was kind of blown away and I think we were supposed to open it on air. And uh, my reaction was like, wait, I was very confused. Now uh, it has come to my attention that this is something that... Uh, my old friend Chael P uh, likes to. This is uh, this is the uh, the clip. I guess this is a Chael P thing because this is from one of his videos. Wait a sec. Lord Chael speaking on behalf of our show sponsor, Established Titles. <laughs> established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. They allow you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so you can officially call yourself a lord or lord Chael speaking. This is amazing. Of our show sponsor First of all, how does Chael get such a random sponsor like this? Number one. Number two, who knew that you could even do such a thing? I wonder if the guys in the back over there are viewing me in a different way now that I'm a lord. Where should we put this? I mean, we have to put this in the studio, right? Uh, I was very touched in all, in all honesty. And I'm, I don't know why I just said in all honesty, because I'm being honest right now. Uh, the best part about this job, without a doubt, hasn't been the interviews or the people that you've met or the places that you've been to or, you know, the events and all that stuff. It's meeting fans like these and these fans in particular, um, and I hate to even call them fans, these people in particular, these supporters of the sport of MMA and my work as well uh, have been very, very supportive. Almost to the point where you wonder like, why are they so supportive? Why are you uh, so kind to me? And uh, you know, it just really means a lot to have people. Like there's a lot of crappy people online. There's a lot of mean-spirited people. There's a lot of just miserable people. And we sometimes put too much attention, too much focus on those people. These are the people that we need to recognize and, and be appreciative of. I need to uh, be better at that. So I'm just, I was really touched by this. Honesty. Uh, honestly, I was really touched by this and uh, it made me a little bit emotional. And I know that doesn't take much, but uh, this was really cool. So thank you very much to all of them. Again, um, Sarah Rose, Amber, Lewis, Judd, Alex, Ian, Ross, Jack, and EK, all mentions, mention in their own right. Tremendous human beings. This really meant a lot to me. So I guess, uh, you know, the lower third, we need to, to now have like a Lord Helwani on the bottom. You know, when you put my name at the beginning of the show, I mean, we can work on that. So this is really nice. I'm going to find a spot in the studio for this. I'll put this here for now. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a lovely gift. And I guess thank you to Chael for uh, introducing us to that. How great is that? Chael P. Chael P's got a sponsor where you can get a piece of land and all of a sudden you're a lord or a lady. Beautiful. So again, my sincerest thanks. Uh, that really did mean a lot to me and uh, I, I appreciate people like you guys uh, more than you know. You are the reason why I love doing this show and all the work that I do and probably why I haven't gone into hiding and uh, quit MMA a long time ago. Now, uh, it appears as though we have Mr. MVP or we don't have Mr. MVP. Now, I'll break the fourth wall for a moment if I can, because that's what I like to do here. Initially, I was told MVP is coming on this show to break the news that uh, he, is, uh, he is fighting Yaroslav on, what was it, May 13th? What is the date here? Yeah, he's fighting him May 13th. Yaroslav Amosov against MVP, London main event for the belt, Bellator middleweight, excuse me, f welterweight, welterweight title. Uh, 26-0 Amosov, 7-0 in Bellator on some kind of role, won the belt last year. And then, of course, MVP has had a great run in Bellator, 20-1 and coming off the win over Douglas Lima, 16-1 and in Bellator. So I was like, yeah, uh, he wants to come on break. And he was like, great, that's awesome. Uh, we love that sort of thing. Chatri came on last. Then I find out 
uh, the news was broken this morning. I was like, all right, fine, whatever. You know, he's going to come on, talk about it. We'll be the first interview. Then I see a bunch of interviews and I'm like, okay, well, what did I get here? I mean, I love talking to MVP. I mean, he's a great DJ. I hope he's coming with some tunes. It's fine. We'll have him on. It's going to be great. Uh, now we're 25 minutes late and I'm just wondering, like, was I punked here? What happened here? Was I punked? What went wrong here? Because I feel like MVP and I have always been buds, but now I kind of feel like I was punked. I mean, the fight announcement, the first interview, the tardiness, what's wrong? What, what did I do? What did I do? All right, so maybe we don't have him. Seemed like a, uh, a false start there from Joe. I think he's trying to get me back for the, uh, the Bills win on Saturday. What a win it was. Yes, what a win it was. It was beautiful. It was great because uh, the first half ended right as the Calvin Cater fight was about to start against Giga, and then it ended just as the third quarter. I mean, it couldn't have been better. It could. I couldn't have timed it any better. It was a beautiful thing. So um, I appreciate everyone. I'm sure they did that on purpose. I'm sure they planned it like that. I'm sure everyone you know wanted everyone to be happy so that we can watch the first half beat down and then we could take a little break and watch the fight and then come back. It was just perfect. It was one of the, I mean, did you guys hear the stat? Uh, he had, uh, Josh Allen did, he had, um, I believe it was more touchdowns than incompletions. Did you guys hear that? Do you guys understand what that means? Do you understand how improbable that is? Do you understand how special that is? I mean, it's just an incredible thing. Did I mention it? I'm not sure if I mentioned it. More touchdowns than incompletions. I mean, no fourth downs, no punts. I mean, the longest third down they had was third and four. I mean, again, this is 20 years built up. This is a lot of text messages, a lot of insults, a lot of rubbing it in. It's 20 years built up. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're high road here. Okay. I don't know if you know this about us. We're classy individuals. We take the high road. But I mean, this is 20 years built up. So I just want to let you guys know, like, I'm just, you know, it's it's all out of love. It's out of, you know, a tremendous, I mean, if I'm being honest, there's a lot of sulkiness on, the, on on their side of the fence. There's a lot of sulking. Sulkiness a word, I'm not sure. But on that side of the fence, a lot of sulking. It's not exactly, you know, doing it the Patriot way. On this side of the fence, it's just all jubilation and happiness and classiness and, and uh, taking the high road. That's my read on the situation, so. Um, all right. So we're in a weird holding pattern now. Like, do we go to MVP? Do we not go to MVP? Do I tag in New York Rick? Do I not? Do I bring in New York Rick and then give him the boot if MVP shows up? I mean, I'm not really quite sure, uh, what to do here. Can we get, uh, can I get a little bit of, uh, direction? Uh, because it seems like, well, it seems like are we, cl are we close to getting him or are we not close to getting him? Let's see. What do you say, Joe? Are we close to getting him? Yeah, he's, we're still talking to Dan here. Oh, all right. So we haven't found him. All right. Um, okay. Take a quick break. Yeah, but Rick did leave. He left the waiting room because we thought we were going to get MVP. So now you can't even bring in. Come on. Bring in Rick. The are you, he are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Is this on the air? Yeah, this is on the air. Oh, hi. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Everything good? I feel like this is sort of like the the show before the show because usually you're first heard from when you come on and, and do your segment. But this yeah. is good. It shouldn't yeah. be so formal. You should be able to jump in. That's why oh, we... for sure. I like the uh, the voice of God here going in. Uh, no, it's so nice. Now, we, now we've got New York Rick back, so now we can bring him in. Okay, what's happening over there? Can you give it... Well, what's the problem? They can't find him? Yeah, like we we could we were we had zero contact with them yeah. up until about ten minutes ago, and now they're saying they've talked to him and that they are going to get him to join via Zoom. But we're waiting on him to join. Yeah. Never mind. Now we have MVP. I mean, this, we do. This is live show business. This right is the here, best. I mean, you don't it, get this it, on game night. You don't get this on game night. This is the best. Wait, so we right. really do have him? We, I'm looking at him right now. Here he is, the man MVP. All right, I'm, I'm getting off now. You can vamp until I mean, he, By the way, he better have a great rap song for me. A, a rap song, at least a good alibi. Here. A, I at least, I, I mean, you, something. We got to play the throwback video. That can fill. To, oh, we have that? The last time yeah, MVP last. was on the program, this is how he came on. No pressure or anything, but this is how the interview started. Do we have that? What's going on here? You going to play some music for us? Oh, yeah. 
Yo, man, I'm mixing it up right now, man. Let's go. Just, let's uh, hear it. I'm, I'm in my vibe. I'm in my vibe. I'm in He's my in vibe. He's in his vibe, baby. I'm in my vibe. Yes. You gotta join me, man. Oh, I'm dancing see. right now, by the way. Yeah, MVP hey. up in this. Yes. I feel hey. it. Oh, it's a I Wednesday. love MVP. We got MVP up in this. He's the man. He wrote this song. Wee. Produced by him. MVP. Written by him. I wasn't him. expecting this. Take that, DJ Mikey B. Hey. Take that, Doug Nasty. Bad self MVP. What do you got? Turntables there in the hotel room? Uh, yeah. he, he had turntables. He did. That's what he told us. That was before the Douglas Lima fight. Uh, and so I think he's is he actually here or is this like an NFT? Is this a figment of my imagination? Uh, Mr. MVP, are you there? Or is it NFT MVP? I am, I am. Where are you at? I'm definitely here. Where, where I don't definitely see you. Here. Is it just is it just no, a I'm phoner? Not. I mean, MV oh, it's <laughs> there he is. Where are you at, MVP? You keeping me waiting? What? Now you're a big shot. You uh, got a title shot. You keeping me waiting? She, <laughs> come on. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. You got everyone scrambling. Everyone, Bellator scrambling. Tim <laughs> scrambling. You're just you're you're trying to play hard to get, huh, MVP? <laughs> Yeah, no, we're moving up now, aren't we? We're moving up. I mean, guy gets a title <laughs> shot and he forgets about the little people. 30 minutes late. What's the excuse? What's the excuse? You got to have a good excuse, right? To be fair, I was, I was still in the gym. I literally just rushed back from the gym. Oh, okay. Now. Um, I'm sorry. My, my coach is putting me through. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I did so send you a message happen. yesterday on WhatsApp. You're always good to reply, but it said the last time you were on WhatsApp was on Thursday. So it made me a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. No, it's uh, I'm having issues with my other phone, so I've actually got a new a new line as well. So I'll, I'll get I'll get your I'll send you that over. What the well. plug line or the other line? What is it? The plug and the low or yeah, something? Come on. I, I, I can't I can't I can't let you know that. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was saying, you know, I was very salty. I was like, wow, MVP stood me up. We didn't get the exclusive. We didn't get the first interview. We got nothing here. I mean, and you don't seem like that kind of guy. Here I am laying it on nah, thick. No. Not me. Not me. Not me. My okay. apologies. My apologies. Congrats yeah, on getting. Love for you, man. Yes, I was hoping so. You know, no song this time. Oh, I got, I got music. If you want music, man, you know, uh, I got we, vibes. What we got? What we got? I got. I always got vibes, man. You weren't prepared because you just rushed back from the gym. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I wasn't ready. Ah. So I'm saying I'm ready now. Yeah. Now I'm in a better mood. Now I feel better. That's what I do for you. That's what I do for you, man. That's that's right. Apology accepted. I'm in my vibe. Yes. Yes. Oh, I gotta get up. I oh, gotta get up again. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Come on, MVP. Tried to stand me up. You don't know about this. You don't know about this. Hey, 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 hey. Chips with the dip. Chips with the dip. Give me some chips with the dip, MVP. Give me some chips with the dip. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, man. You're crazy. Uh, congrats on the title. <laughs> congrats on the title shot. Why is it happening in May, though? I feel like that's that's way too long. Why are we announcing this five months in advance, MVP? It's about the build-up, man. It's about the story. Okay. You want to make we want to make it a big occasion. You know, the last one, obviously, there was a story already. It's kind of like it was, it was just the story was already there. It's easy to kind of to to. To, to get what had happened, you know, there's a, we had history in the past and, you know, I've been pushing for that fight. There's already a history there. No one really knows. There's not really anything between us okay. outside of just us being at the top of our game. So I think it just gives us enough time to kind of push it, um, uh, uh, get, our, get, our, get, get our training up to make sure we're both at our best. So you're happy with the timing? Yeah, it is, it is to be fair. Uh, you know, it'll be, it'll, yeah, I'm not no complaining. Problem. I mean, I'm you're getting a touch shine. You're getting to do it at home. It's it's rare that the yes. challenger gets to fight for the belt at home, right? Are you surprised that he agreed to that? I feel like you're the bigger draw here, for being honest. So you get more of a say. Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. To be fair, I think he gets that as well. And I don't I don't think he's uh, worried about it. He's a he's an amazing opponent. You know, he's he hasn't faced the defeat yet. So what what's what's there for him to worry about? 
You impressed with him? Yeah, I think he's a he's a he's a talent fighter. You know, technically, when you think about it, arguably one of the best in in MMA, especially based on his record. Technically, the best in MMA based on his record. Um, you know, only second to Khabib, who's now retired. So, you know, I'm I'm dealing with somebody that is a uh, an amazing mixed martial artist. It's one of those tough ones where he's super tough and everyone who watches the sport and watches Bellator knows that, but he's not exactly like the biggest household name, right? It's almost like you have to explain to people just how tough he is so that they understand just how special it will be when, if you beat him, right? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. He obviously hasn't, I guess it might be the language barrier as well. He's not necessarily, uh, as you say, a household name, hasn't got a big profile, but the, the, the guy's a beast. The guy's an absolute beast. And, you, you know, we all saw that with, uh, you know, how he dealt with Douglas Lima as well um, and multiple other opponents that he's gone through in Bellator uh, and, and obviously before. So, yeah, no, a great, a great opponent. Speaking of Lima, that was your last fight. A uh, big win for you. Uh, the the rematch, exacting revenge. How how did you feel about that fight and that performance? Uh, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I, know, I wasn't not happy. I was happy, obviously, I got the, the, the result. But I think we're all all quite harsh on ourselves. We want to push ourselves and be better. Um, so uh, I feel like I could have performed better. There's still certain things I was a bit hesitant on, but again, the guy is an absolute monster in there, man. He's so, he's such a tough guy. Um, so yeah, you know, his, his, his accolades speak for itself. Um, so it wasn't something that I could kind of, I didn't think, feel like, I didn't feel like I could take the same risks I may normally do. Mm. Uh, and the win was the most important thing more than anything. So I definitely feel like I could have, I could have done better, which is another reason why I kind of wanted to go again. Um, but yeah, um, obviously happy with the win. Uh, it seems like that may have been the fight that changed Bellator's stance on non-title main events. Cause now they're going five rounds for those. Do you like that? I, I don't I don't like how it was done per oh, se. Tell me why. Um, simply because, as you say, it was kind of it felt like that fight was what kind of pushed it on to that. And I know we always there's, there's, there's this big thing about fighters pay, but you're you're asking me to do extra rounds mm. and without uh, talking about our purses going up for doing so. Mm. So, like uh, you know, it's ten extra minutes that people get potentially. Um, outside of that, I get why it's done. But yeah, I feel like it was a bit—it was a bit of a um, knee-jerk reaction to what what took place. Interesting. Uh, versus versus actually, you know, sitting down, and actually, you know, planning it out properly. I know, you know, Scott Coker did mention that he had, you know, spoken about it uh, prior anyway, but I, I hadn't seen any of that. So he, he may he may have as well. Um, but yeah, it just seemed a bit. Um, it, it felt like it almost depleted my win uh, against Lima. So I feel like it was, it was just done with a bit too much haste. But uh, at the same time, yeah, like if it makes sense, like I completely understand why, you know, they would do it, they would do that. And other organizations that you know they're already they're already doing it, and it makes so, and it does make sense. You bring up a great point, if only because it, it feels like maybe the message was, hey, we needed two more rounds of this, so now we're going to do this. And you don't hear a lot of fighters who say that what you just said. So I give you props for mm -hmm. that, like you. You should get paid more if you're going to work more, right? Put more, yeah. you know, time on the clock. Uh, I, I'm assuming that hasn't been discussed, right? Nothing's really changed. No, I'm just. I was just more talking, just based on doing extra rounds for like non-title fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, not talking, I'm not talking just personally for myself. I'm talking yeah. for anybody that's now going to be in that in that uh, situation. There should be now be a discussion about the extra time that is going to be on. Like same with any job in the world. Yeah, if you're going to do time there's good there's talk of extra pay so um it just feels like we get we get bullied a lot in this sport and we're already struggling over here so um yeah it's just, i feel like people need to take a bit more consideration of the fighter and how it affects them uh oh, not just the, the entertainment side i couldn't agree more by the way in bellator because i know in the ufc you get like a main event bonus do you guys get that for non-title fights in bellator i don't no i don't think so no hmm. Maybe that comes into play. Um, that would be very interesting. I also saw, you know, the guy who's been talking about this a lot recently is Jake Paul. It seemed like you were campaigning for the Jake Paul fight there for a second. 
I saw after the Woodley fight. You posted something on your social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it feels actually like that's a fight that could be made if only because you're both Showtime, you know? I mean, he's a free agent, but it, it could happen. Mm -hmm. Was this ever discussed seriously? Was it ever brought? Oh, no, no. I just, no. it was just, it was just kind of in the moment. Yeah. Me just say like, you know, uh, I feel like someone, <laughs> someone that, uh, I feel like I can. So <laughs> in that moment, it was just a case of like, guys, I think you guys need me back in boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in all honesty, uh, since then, shall I say, I've actually been a bit of a fan of him in terms of what he's actually pushing for. So, um, yeah, w which did surprise me. <laughs> yeah, you've turned. You went from not uh, liking him to liking him. Definitely, definitely. I, again, it's just, it's what he's about in, in terms of what he's trying to push on to the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I, I get, it's kind of dear to my heart and obviously affects me uh, and affects a lot of my colleagues and a lot of up and coming fighters that, you know, I'm training with in the gym. And I would love to see them, whether it is, it's even in my time, I would love to see in their generation, the next generation coming up, that they don't have the same struggles and have the same, uh, you know, complaints and things going through their career. Will it ever change, you think? Honestly, like, I know you want it, but do you think it will change? Because I don't see, we've been talking about it for so long and nothing's changed, right? You guys still, yeah. I mean, fighter pay is pretty much the same. The revenue sharing is pretty much the same. You know, like mm -hmm. nothing's really changed. Do you think it ever changes? We need, we need a, a competitor that is willing to actually make those kind of things happen. If it doesn't start at, with obviously, the biggest show in mixed martial arts, if it doesn't start there and they're not willing to do it, uh, other shows are going to have to, be the first person to take that step and it will definitely apply pressure to the, to the bigger shows because the, a lot of fighters are going to be like, you know what, there's no, it's better, it's better over there. Mm. Um, uh, so yeah, so it, it, I, I, I don't know. Um, I want to try and help as much as I can. Fighters do need to come together. It is a difficult one. It puts a lot of people in uh, under strain or get, they get sidelined or, you know, uh, and, and this, that's another reason why, um, we just need to come together. Somebody needs to organize something so that we can actually have a, a one stance. Yeah, I think part of the problem is every you know a lot of people I think share your opinion, but no one wants to emerge as that guy, right? No one wants to emerge exactly. as that, that first guy, and it gets a little complicated with mm -hmm. Bellator UFC. But for the most part, you guys are all kind of fighting for the same thing. Um, Hundred percent. And you're put in a tough spot. You know, I, I, I sympathize. It's hard to criticize. You're not doing it maliciously. You just want to get your fair share of the yeah. pie. But at the end of the day, in this sport, you could be punished for doing that, right? There's no meritocracy. Exactly. So it's exactly. tough. Exactly. You get that title, though. Strange to be a, you get that oh, title, yeah. though. You get a big megaphone. No, 100%. To be fair, I still feel, uh, as we've said, even with guys that have belts, so some of them are still not as well known, uh, yeah. you, know, with, you know, with my next opponent. So even now, I, I definitely do have a megaphone anyway. A lot of what I say, can be spun in the wrong way. And so, and then, you know, I can get criticized for it. But the one thing about me is I always speak my mind. I always speak my heart. And as you say, I don't mean it in any malicious way. I'm just speaking from my personal experience and what it feels like from my point of view, whether I'm correct in that. And I'm happy to always hear another side and then say, you know what? Yeah, you know what? You're probably right there. And I probably could have done this. I should have done that. Um, but I always like to, I always like to be honest in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, last time we had you on, we were talking about your contract situation. Has that changed now because you got the title shot? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So you got yeah. a new deal? Yeah. Congrats. Thank you, thank you. How many fights? Uh, no, it's, uh, I'm trying to think, I can't even think of the, the actual whole thing. It kind of just got incorporated oh, and I added see. on. And, uh, so, um, but uh, to be fair, I leave that to the paradigm, guys. Yeah, uh, I feel you. But did you uh, were, were there the any talks about uh, testing the waters finally after all these years? Sorry, were there th were there any talks about testing uh, free agency after all these years? Nah, to be fair, um, again after you know I had a had a talk with uh, Bellator, I am happy with what you know how they responded to it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as I say, this sport can be difficult with regards to your the higher ups versus the fighter. So the way they responded to it was amazing. Um, and after I respect I respect them for it. So it's, it doesn't give me any reason to want to move anywhere. Okay, good. I'm happy to hear that. Um, and so at, at this point, do you feel like, uh, you know, what we know from MVP, you're a very entertaining fighter and uh, some love the 
whatever you want to say, showboating, theatrics. Some don't, but you are consistent with it. Against a guy like Yaroslav, we can't be doing that, right, in the fight? Or am I wrong? He's so dangerous. Oh, no, no. It's, it's, it, has to be, it has to be me all the way through. Mm. Uh, I'm either going to... It's the same way I entered the sport. It's either going to be me... And and you know I'm gonna come into the sport as myself with my with my as you say the theatrics my you know my style, or I wasn't gonna be in the sport uh, at all. And it's the same going into this fight. It's either gonna be me with my style with the theatrics, or there's no point in me taking the fight. Wow, wow. And so I'm, I'm from from beginning to end, I will always be me. Wow. So in this even in this fight with the stakes so high against arguably the toughest opponent you've ever fought. I would say that's uh, you know an accurate statement considering what he just did to to Lima. We're still going to see the dancing and the moving and all that stuff. It, it all plays a part, and it's it's just become me. Mm. Um, so if I neglect these things, I I almost take away from what I'm doing to my opponent in that moment. Uh, I know a lot of people just think it's just me just acting out, and you know the way I can belittle credible opponents this is why i get i get such criticism on the on the other side but like i said i'll always i'll continue doing that and i'll always be me how do you feel right now i feel like uh uk mma has never been better with uh the fighters in in bellator the fighters in the ufc i feel like uk mma is on fire right now does it feel that mm-hmm. way to you as well that this is like the yeah peak? no definitely definitely there's a buzz i think there's a lot of a lot of the, i think there's a that we, we've got a big wave coming through um, and we, we should see a lot of champions. I'm hoping to be one of them. Do you feel like your Bellator career, because you've been there for so long, 16 and one in Bellator, it would it would mm. have felt incomplete if you never got the belt? Like, did the belt really, you know, for the longest time we were saying we want to see you fight for the belt, and they were kind of giving you the slow approach. But for you, mm. is the belt validation? Is it something that you felt like you needed to get to sort of complete your career whenever that time comes? It's more, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the acknowledgement of my progression. Mm. You know, there's been, I think there's been a few moments in my career, quite a few moments in my career where I feel like, okay, yeah, that's, that's definitely shown my progression and so on and so forth. And this is another big statement that, you know, nobody can really deny. Um, so, yeah, no, it's definitely something that I would love to, um, you know, be able to look back and say, look, I achieved this. Uh, I, I may out myself here for a second, but you you walked out with uh, a hip hop artist last time. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Who was it? Skepta. I help you out. I yeah, 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 yeah. He what, is he a UK based yeah. guy? He's UK, but that guy's worldwide. He's, He's worldwide. Amazing, yeah, like one of the yeah one of the one of the one of the greatest of our our yeah. generation. And I I've actually been listening to it since I was fourteen, thirteen, maybe. How did this happen? Um, younger. Um, again, is when I say about like moments of progression and it's, it's also those acknowledgements from, you know, different people. Um, and over time we kind of became friends just as beforehand anyway. He never even let me know that he was making the track. He just released it. Wow. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, he just went in, he just went into the lab and it's like, get, got to work, released the track. And then I was just like, I have to use it for that. We spoke again. I was like, oh, you know, you, you're going to, you're going to, you might, you have to perform that. He's like, yeah, I was always going to. I was like, cool, man. Let's let's make it happen. Wow, it was a it was an epic moment, man. I really I really did enjoy that moment uh, a lot to the point where I was so hyped up, and I think the crowd was as well. I got into the cage, and my coach looked at me, and he's like, Calm down. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> he was just worried I was just gonna have like an adrenaline dump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it, yeah I, I completely understand why because seriously, that that just that walk to the cage was unbelievable oh it was incredible i love when when you know it just makes the fight feel a little bit bigger a little more special it was back home for you um to have someone Mm. walk out with you and that song is called isn't it called bellator that song yeah that's wild that is wild and it's about you yeah 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 it's just it's obviously it's a mixture i just get mentioned in there as well yeah yeah, yeah, in in the or so yeah it's a it's a cool track I didn't mean track, to disrespect. I, I mean, I'm more of a dizzy rascal guy, if I'm being honest. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little. Like, you're, you're you're way back. You're way back. I, I'm, I'm dizzy rascal. <laughs> you you're rascal, rascal. Awesome, man. You got you got. I, I'm gonna have to update you with some new stuff. Okay. I'm gonna have to update you. I mean, of course. The, <laughs> I mean, the greatest is Drake, right? To me, Champagne Poppy's number one. I know that's not a cool pick. Right now, wait. 
No, no. Right now, in terms of what he's done, what he's achieved, the, the fact that he, the longevity he speaks on, yeah, yeah, longevity he speaks on is you have to give him, you have to give him his props for that, man. He's he's unbelievable. I'm going to get killed for this. People, you know, the cool thing to say is Jay Z, obviously Tupac, obviously Biggie. I just think the longevity and the hits, the amount of hits that Drake has had, I mean, it's unmatched mm -hmm. in my opinion. And he's Canadian. Yeah, yeah, he's de he definitely. Again, you got uh, Jay Z's kind of like. I don't even compare him with anybody else. He's just different level. He doesn't he doesn't exist in that world anymore. Yes. He's just he's already he's already the living legend. Um and I and I you know honestly if I reckon if he wanted to pursue the music, he he'd be the same as well. Um but you know, he, he he's a um an entrepreneur now mm -hmm. doing so many different things, helping so many different people. Music is probably the last thing on his on his list. Although he comes from there, but yeah, no. In terms of longevity, I I, I do agree. Uh, Drake is just unbelievable, unmatched. To be fair. So when you uh, walk out May thirteenth, we have something special planned. I know it's a little early, but we we got to top this now, right? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, and I'm taking my time. I, I never like to rush or have a snap decision because a lot of these things just come to me in the moments, uh, or, or or in the lead up. To, to a fight so there's there's never any reason for me to kind of like snatch and grab something now I always know that you know as I'm going through my camp as I'm you know meeting different people things just slowly fall into place uh, and it's been the same with all of my finishes everything just kind of fell into place I think one of the most craziest ones was still the gauntlet one with David Rickles because Chris Pratt was outside oh, yeah. 50 Cent. He wasn't even supposed to be there per se. He kind of last minute decision. Uh, he happened to be filming in the area. Obviously, he's big in the Marvel world. I ended up using a glove. I wasn't even going to use the glove. Just the way it all kind of fell into place. And and I like to I like to kind of have those moments. Oh, yeah. Also, the Pokemon one, that was huge. Exactly. Back. Yeah, uh, exactly. That got you a lot of love. Uh, by the way, uh, before I let you go, March 19th, it seems like the UFC is coming to the UK for the first time in a while. And then there's your card, Mar May 13th. Which one's going to sell more tickets? Oh, you, the, it, London's my town. I, I, I don't care who's there. I always say the same thing. Uh, uh, and I've been saying it from throughout my whole career when they've said, oh, you know, they're, you know, they're going to be putting you first for the TV card. Um, or how do you feel about not being on the main card or not being the main main event? And I said, I'm always the main event. Uh, I remember still uh, that cyborg fight. Um, it was, there was two fights after my fight. Yeah. Most people couldn't even tell you what that was. And they were there. Mm. A lot of people after my fight left the building. They were so pumped. They just wanted out. They just wanted, wanted, or see, wanted to see if they can find me <laughs> um, afterwards. London is definitely my city. So uh, yeah, I, I, I don't care. I'm definitely... And this is another reason why we've got so much time to, to actually put into work into into promoting this. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff happening as well in the background. Oh, we're gonna have merch. Uh, I'm doing. A, I've got an MVP uh, token coming out. Oh, on the crypt in the crypto space. Wow, so we're doing a lot of. Yeah, yeah. So there is an MVP it. NFT. So yeah, oh, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Wow, okay. It's coming. Yeah. How about that? Definitely coming. So we're doing a lot. We're doing a lot of work for this one. This is why I'm kind of happy. The, the, the business side of me is very happy that we have the time to really put it in. I kind of hate the last, the snap decisions of, oh yeah, next month we're doing this. Ah. I like it as a fighter, but um, like I said, to be able to really promote and actually for myself, um, for, my, for my pocket as well, to be able to get sponsors in at the right time yeah. and da, 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 da. You know, it takes a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, negotiation back and forth. Um, so yeah, having that time is definitely amazing. And it is good, you know, unlike... UFC and PFL, you guys can still get the sponsors, right? There, there are no restrictions yeah. there, correct? Are there restrictions? Yeah, yeah. Like, are there certain ones that you can't? I feel like, uh, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'm sure there's a couple that um, Bellator have exclusive okay. rights with certain people, so they don't, they won't allow certain things. But to be fair, the majority of the time, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't think I've ever had issues of a sponsor that I've gotten that they've had any issues with so That's um great. so far so good yeah yeah it's, 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 so that is a is is a great um aspect of, of of bellator well i can't wait what a huge fight yaroslav amosov his first title defense going up against the one and only michael venom page uh may 13th sse arena in wembley yep. uh i was uh you know i was cursing you out internally i was like wow this dude you know 
this dude standing me up. I mean, we, we I mean, how, <laughs> how many years has he been on my show? I mean, finally he gets a title shot, <laughs> standing me up. By the way, is Wembley a place or is Wembley just, I know it's the arena, but is Wembley an actual place or is it Wembley in London? How does that work? I always was wondering about that. Like yeah, SSC Wem- Arena, a, is it a town? No, 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 no. Okay. SSC, it's just the, it's just the building. Uh, and then obviously Wembley is a place. Uh, but the, and obviously SSC happens to be in Wembley. Okay, so okay, so SSE, so Wembley is an actual place where the arena is. It's not just the name of the arena. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. And that's in London. Yeah. That's in London. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I would like to go there <laughs> these days. Uh, Michael, thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. No problem. Good luck to you. Thanks for coming on. I know it was a big day for you. The news coming out, so we appreciate you very yes, much. Definitely. And don't worry, I won't hold it no, against you, you that you didn't respond to my text or anything <laughs> like that. The music made up for it. Okay, now I got. Let, why don't you play okay, us out? What do, got, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I just, I just, I just shut everything off. I, 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 I okay. Get you back. I get you back. <laughs> All right. Fine. I don't want to put you on the spot. Thanks, my friend. All the best to you, and uh, no we'll problem. talk to you soon. Thank you. Much, much respect. Take care. All right. There he is, Michael Venom Page, the man. Some nice tunes there. Do you think I do you think I lay it on a little thick? I mean, I make people, yeah. It's that Jewish uh that Jewish guilt. I'm sorry. But I do love MVP. What a legend. So that's May 13th. Some big fights coming up. First quarter, second quarter. UFC going to UK probably March 19th. They haven't officially announced it, but that seems to be the plan. And then, of course, uh, this one two months later. There's a ton of fights in between now and then. But uh, nice to see the organizations traveling again, getting out there. They're going to Ireland, Bellator is in in February. So uh, that should be a fun scene. Austin Vanderford against uh, Gegard Mousasi for the 185-pound title. So stay tuned for that. Of course, this weekend at UFC 270. And uh, next weekend, Bellator returns. That's on the... uh, January 29th date. I'll be at the Royal Rumble in St. Louis if you're looking for me, but uh, they'll be returning to Arizona with the card headlined by Moldovsky versus Ryan Bader. All right, matter of seconds here. We're going to be joined by GC to recap the uh, the weekend that was, right? GC, not New York, Rick? Yeah. Uh, but first, a quick word from our good friends over at DraftKings. As you know, yeah. has like a little uh, video game theme to it. Video game vibes. It is time for UFC 270 and the heavyweight title fight between the undefeated Cyril the French Prince, aka Bon Gamay Gan, and knockout artist Francis Nganou. For these guys, it can only take one punch to win. Same goes for you at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of not only the UFC, the MMA hour, but the NFL as well. New customers can bet just $1 and win a hundred in free bets. If either fighter lands a punch, rather bet this weekend's football games instead. Who's playing on, uh, on Sunday. It's the Bills. Chiefs. Uh, DraftKings also has a special offer for those looking to get in on the gridiron action. I believe Bill's uh, plus two. That's the one you're looking for. Uh, New customers can get 56 to one odds on any playoff team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DMAR. Throw down just $1 on the UFC 270 main event and win $100 in free bets if Gan or Nganu land a punch. A punch! That's code DMAR this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook. The official. Sports betting partner of the UFC. Must be 20 on New Jersey. Indiana or PA only. New customers only. Minimum $5 prize required. $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sports record for the deal. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Yeah. All right. It's a special MLK Junior Day edition of GC and Helwani. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing Feeling good great. after the Bills. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I told you, but uh, big game on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, Josh Allen, something. Josh Allen, incompletions, touchdowns, seven for seven. I mean, have you ever seen, I know you're still high off of your Bulldogs. A lot of people are giving me crap for calling it the Natty. You can call it the Natty, right? Yeah, Natty National Championship. I, I, 
said a few times I was going to the Natty. So what do they haters. want you to call it? National championship? I don't know what they're. They're just a bunch of losers out there. Uh, anyway, I said the Natty, and people were all up in arms. Uh, one of the all-time great performances. I know you've been watching football for quite some time. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I mean, it was months. incredible. It was yeah. incredible. Seven for seven. Yeah, I actually, so one of my friends loves the NFL. Okay. And uh, he's betting on every NFL game. So I was like, you know what? Uh, every NFL playoff game. I was like, you know what? I'll ride with you. Uh, one of his picks that I rode with him was the Patriots. What? Yeah. Really? I told him, I told him before the game, too. I was like, man, I, I kind of hate this Patriots one. And uh, You went yeah. with the Patriots? I told him I was going to blindly follow him, and that's what I did. Oh. Um, so, yeah. But really? He went, he went three and two. He did all right. Oh, my God. Uh, what was, yeah. what was the other was, one? Uh, the other one that we lost was the Cowboys. Yeah, that was that was yeah. a weird one. Yeah, I mean, it's just for fun. I'm 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 right. Wait, did you go them. Patriots money line? Patriots with the points? Or were nah, they? Nah, they're all just it's all just spread picks. Yeah, he took four and a half. Picks. Yeah, yeah. I tried to talk myself into it too. I was like, I guess I like it because I hate it, and I don't really know like a much a That's ton weird. about NFL betting. Yeah, so didn't didn't work out for us. You know, I think it says a lot uh, because didn't I say like I don't watch national champion, I don't watch this type of stuff, college football, and yet I was still rooting for Georgia. Literally six days later, you bet against my team. That I think that that's, I mean, pretty much. I wanted the Bills to win. I think I think my exact quote was, "I want the Bills to win twenty to 17. Oh, Okay, fair enough. I mean, that could be. I'd like to see the quote. Was it in text? Or was yeah, it, it was in text. I can okay. get it for you. All right. I can get it for you. Wow. I mean, that is a questionable pick. I mean, uh, I can't like I can't actually cheer for the Patriots. You know, Super Bowl 51 Falcons. Yeah. Even that alone. Memories. Yeah, Even I got that alone, memories. I can't believe that you would do that. 28 to 3. A lot of people are bringing that up. Saturday was 27 to 3. So, of course, it didn't um, exactly go down the same way. Uh, do me a favor. Bills plus 2, okay? Bills plus 2. That's the line. I yeah. haven't seen it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that is going to be a crazy game. Yeah, Bills plus that two. Sunday night, game. 630. Can't wait. Uh, definitely sweaty, just speaking about it, and nervous. In any event, uh, how was your actual weekend in terms of fighting bets? MMA, yeah. It was just yeah. like a meh. Meh? Meh weekend. Kind of uh, stumbled out the gate in 2022 or yeah, what? stumble out the gate a, a little bit. Uh, we, we can start with the singles here. Okay. Uh, we go one and two on the normal ones. We get the Chuke again by decision. Uh, someone on Instagram before the fight told me that was free money. I was worried that they were going to jinx that, but but sure enough, it you know it's a pretty easy bet to cash. And then I make the bonehead arrow. I try to I try to hedge on Cater, and I go Cater by KO. Uh, first round, he gets he gets Giga's back. I'm like, why did I not just take Cater straight up? And then like when we get to like round three, round four, I'm just like, wow, he's not going to knock him out. Like this is going to go to a decision. Why did I not just take? Cater straight up because I had two parlays last leg over one and a half and Giga so I was trying to hedge out to guarantee profits and uh, I ended up just losing more by <laughs> doing Cater by KO for a hedge and it didn't work out for me I so that's a lesson learned uh just feels like you got a little up. greedy there I think I did yeah. I think I did and like I immediately regretted it in round one as soon as they went to the mat uh so yeah just like a a really dumb error on my part by by going the KO hedge. I should have just done it straight up, and then we would have we would have locked in profits for the week. Damn. Um, but I didn't. I didn't. Chukagian via decision was like the sure bet. I mean, that was nice. That that was a nice one. Uh, Joe Anderson Brito, he just got dominated. Uh, or no, 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 it wasn't Brito. Brahimaj got dominated. Yeah. Uh, Brito, it was a little bit closer, but he still couldn't pull it off. Uh, and then we go to the parlays. Um, we uh, we missed wow. this one, obviously, Chikadze. Mm -hmm. uh, we've found some success lately in the prop parlays. That's three straight cards where it's been our biggest bet on the card, mm. uh, and three straight cards it's cashed. Um, so these these like fight don't go the distance or or the over unders uh, we found success in. It's my my alter ego ego Tommy Totals coming into play. I uh, I do that for college basketball. I bet over unders. Uh, and we, I call myself Tommy Totals. I find some success there. Uh, we've been able to bring it over to MMA as well. Uh, and then we missed the air fryer pretty bad. So, uh, so yeah, wrap up the weekend here. We finished down 0.43 units. Uh, so really just like a, a mad weekend. Mm. I mean, could be worse. Tommy Totals is interesting. I'd like to explore that for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what yeah. is that? Is that just like a gimmick that you play or what? Yeah, so I do the college basketball thing as well, and I sure. take over-unders. And, you know, to start the year, I was 15-3 and three on over-unders there. So What do you mean by over-unders? Like totals. Over-unders. Like, like on the, the games? Yeah, on like college basketball. Oh, just, over okay, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it was like over-under on wins, you know? Oh, no, 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 yeah. People do that. Totals. 
You, I mean, the response was yeah. like, what a stupid question, but that's a real thing. Uh, well, they're going to win, win 20 total. games. Yeah. yeah, win 20. Okay. Not really in college basketball, though. They don't do that? No? No, nah, not in college basketball. Big in NBA. Yeah, big in NBA, not in college basketball. Really? Okay, fine. Yeah. Sorry. Um, all right, Tommy Totals. We should have called the segment that. <laughs> the whole segment? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know you had an alter ego. Um, all right, so uh, a man out the gate. Man, it's just man. Like it's a, you know, I not really horrible, like the, not great. I didn't like, yeah, I didn't like the the card to begin with. Yeah, not horrible. It was not the best not card, great. if we're being honest. I mean, it was. Yeah, we lost. We lost best. fights. It was. Eh. We lost fights. Just this is going to be a theme right now with you know Omicron and. Yeah. The, I don't think anyone's going to get supremely sick, it seems like, but it seems like we're going to lose a lot of fights. I mean, just to this weekend's card alone, 270, it feels like every, you know, that we lost um, Olenek and we lost Movsar uh, and then yeah, the Greg Mosar Hardy. One hurt. I was really looking yeah. forward to that one. That was probably the best non title fight on the card. But yeah, it seems like we're going to we're gonna lose a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad we got the pay per view this weekend, though. You know what's crazy? I don't even know if I should. Speak it into existence. Should I say it or not? Yeah, I want to hear it now. Well, I have to look it up, but I was actually thinking of this because you know how we keep losing all these fights? Let's see here. Has any fight, like the week of, and maybe you'll remember, the week of in, in this pandemic era, we haven't lost any main events. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that weird? It is weird. <laughs> I think it's like they're untouchable. Yeah, like... It, uh, that is weird. Like, uh, I'm looking... Okay, so let's go... Let's go May of 2020. That's when this all started, right? I mean, it's a lot of fights, but ugh, yeah, it's going to take too long. But like the week of, you know how we're losing a lot of these fights like a week, 10 days before, 14 days yeah. before. Off the top of my head, I could be wrong. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. I'm I, sure someone knows if it has happened. Yeah. I don't recall. I mean, I'm trying to think. But it just like always feels like we lose like three, four. Like I think we lost 11 fights last week. Yeah. But it's like the main event always. It always feels like the sort of non-consequential ones, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, right. Ilya is a big fight. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. like Brandon Moreno. It's not Francis. I, I and, and by the way, I'm not trying to say any, you know, I mean, nefarious. This is a nice conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> one out the ten foil half for this one. I like it. But have you noticed? It I is mean, interesting. Am I yes, the only like one? I, I was like sitting there researching fights last week, and I'm like, wow, we lost so many. And it's just like, it was almost like it was never even a concern that we were going to lose Giga and Cater. Yeah, it's weird. We're, we're probably speaking a jinx into existence right now, and we're going to lose uh, yeah, the main I don't, listen, All I'll say, that and the USADA thing is interesting. The USADA thing. There haven't been a lot of pops. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, know. you know, when, so there was a period at the beginning of USADA where it seemed like every week there was a period like around UFC 200 where it felt like you know there was obviously the Brock thing, the Jones thing, but it just felt like there was someone popping every five days, every seven days. Now I can't I can't remember the last high profile. I guess the last high profile pop would it be TJ Dillashaw against Henry Cejudo? I can't even remember a bigger one. Yeah, since I mean, I feel like they give out more jackets than they do. Wow. Can we put that on the bulletin board? I mean, that is a big quote right there. Put that on the MMA Fighting Instagram. They give out more jackets than they do what? Suspensions? Am I wrong? Like, I feel like... No, that was a great line. I'm actually like I'm jealous more, of the line. Like, four or five jackets out. It's been a lot of jackets. Does anyone yeah. wear those jackets? I don't know. I like, like could you they imagine only wear them around. when they get them, right? When you they wear, get them. Yeah, for it. the photo op, but you're not going to the mall. You're not going to the grocery store wearing that jacket. No. I don't know I don't what's worse, so. wearing that jacket to the grocery store or wearing like a, uni a UFC uniform shirt. Yeah. I saw one person, by the way. One person in my entire life, a uh, grocery store near my house was wearing a Robbie Lawler championship Reebok <laughs> uniform shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're saying like wearing that... The and jersey, you're not the UFC fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. You, like you buy like the yes. gold plated yes. like Robbie. Yes. Lally. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I, and they're super expensive too. They I've are. Always wondered who buys. Them. Oh my god! I'm I, sure there's people listening right now that buy those. And I'm sorry for offending you. I'm sorry for offending you. I I actually wonder what's worse, the person who buys it or the fighter wearing their own. Probably the fighter wearing their own. No, oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I think like if you wear if it's your own name, like if you're the championship fighter, like. If you're Caitlin Chukagian, you're going to get like bananas and you're wearing your <laughs> Oh, you're talking about if she's wearing her her own shirt. Yeah. That's weird. I, don't know. I mean, I get that they give them for free, but like, come on. They're not even nice. You were the you were the Hiwani merch. 
Yeah. Wow. Okay, we're going there. Um, Thug nose merch. But that's nice. Yeah, I mean, they're just wearing their uniforms. I, I guess. I stand behind them. You stand behind? Stand behind them, yeah. What's up with the writing of the letter? Like, the name is, like, going vertically like that. Yeah, yeah At least yeah, do yeah. it like a football jersey where the name is, you know, in the back like this, you know? I don't hate that. I don't hate the vertical writing. It seems like, it seems needlessly unique. Like, oh, let's think of a way to make this different. Let's put the name. Go- Could you imagine if NBA jerseys had names going down like that? I mean, yes, that would be ridiculous. But same thing. Imagine football jerseys with name going, the soccer jerseys, warm ups. I mean, it looks normal on the pants. Like it, it covers the pants. It looks much better on the pants. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you mentioned like losing fighters and everything. Yes. You know. It wasn't as good as it normally was. Maybe just because we were just getting out of the gates, people are still getting warmed up. But we did have a few big hitters this week. Oh, what do we got? Uh, yeah, we'll start with the big hitter of the week. And it actually, I mean, how sweet is this? Saeed Yakub, Kakramanov. He, we bet, I put in a bet on him. And unfortunately, we lost him. He had to pull out because he tested positive for COVID. But he oh. hung around and he throws together this parlay, five legs, plus 1769, throws 250 on it, and he wins $4,422. Jeez. Holy crap. Yeah. So instead of fighting, instead of getting his, his paycheck from fighting, he, uh, he just ends up making a big bet and uh, cashes out on it. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and then we got a, we got a few honorable mentions here. We'll throw them out. Uh, at rent dues instead of at rents due. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, his name is not Tom Selleck, so I just want to be clear here. Uh, this is not Tom Selleck, even though what? the profile picture is of oh, Tom Selleck. Okay, wow, uh, yeah, that is a throwback. <laughs> yeah, he says his name is not Tom Selleck. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he throws a hundred dollars on a uh, plus. 1,071 parlay. It actually had your bills in it. Had the bills, the bangles, and Calvin Cater in it. I mean, wow. By the way, uh, I did a little pre-show on Saturday. Uh, my daughter Claire popped in. Uh, she picked bills, 1,800, pat zero. And then that's, she a, picked, that's a pretty good that's I mean, a pretty good guess. For a minute there, it was looking like we were going in that direction. It, I it, mean, it slowed yeah. down a little bit. And then she picked Cater. I mean, that's that's the Claire Helwani parlay. And then he added bangles on top to... Cash eleven hundred dollars. If you're wondering, uh, she also picked Surreal Gun and Davison Figueredo for this weekend. So, ooh, yeah, I like the figgy pick. I mean, Cyril Gone is the line is moving on that. He's like he's more like, in his direction. He's like yeah, he's like minus one sixty at some point. Oh wow, yeah, he's like he's becoming a, a pretty big favorite. Uh, last two honorable mentions: uh, Sun Tzu, Art of War. This is just from Daily Fantasy. Like, he just balled out. He entered $2,700, and he won over 15000 So he profits over $13,000 just on Daily Fantasy, which is just, I don't know how you do that. I mean, that is just crazy. So shout out to at Sun Tzu. And then uh, at TJ Jerk, TJ Jerkowitz. <laughs> TJ Jerkowitz. Uh, yeah. Great name. Well, he took Brandon uh, Roy Val live at plus 385, and then he doubled down again at plus 392. What do you mean by live? Like, it, during the fight when it looked like Roy Val was losing. Oh, uh, nice. To Bontarine. Yeah, I mean, ballsy stuff there. Profits $971. So, I mean, just beautiful execution there by uh, by Jerkowitz. Yeah, Jerkowitz. It's a um, Polish name. I hope, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. By the way, how has life changed for you now that uh, it's legal in the state of New York? I mean, it's fantastic. I can Is it just, amazing? I mean, I can just log on right here. And, it's incredible. And it's that easy. I don't have to call my people out in the swamp. Right. And you could do live. Yeah, you can do live. Have you done live? Are you a big live guy? Yeah, I do it every once in a while. Yeah. I don't know what to do with live because especially like I'll, I'll live bet other sports, but if I'm live betting MMA, like I don't know, do I tweet it out? Do I tell people I'm taking it? Can I come on the show if I hit it, but I didn't tell anybody about it? It's Fair. I mean, if you tweet it out, if you say right now I'm taking yeah. uh, Moreno in the second round plus yeah. whatever, I don't think it's a horrible thing to do. I mean, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, DraftKings League. We actually, oh, somebody yeah, somebody won some money. The draft king for the week is it El Cubano? No, nah, he was uh, he was last time. This time it was uh, I like that. The draft king, yeah, the draft king for the week. Oh, there it is. There it is. Some a little what in the world? Oh my god, wow, this is incredible. There it is, Adrian Abara. <laughs> what look at that. That was amazing. Can I see that again? How oh, did yeah, you... we can run it back. That was very like uh, 1987 Nintendo. Yeah, I was hoping that the text would be a little bit more legible, but uh, wow, we're that's... still working on it. We're getting we're getting through some things. Look at that, the draft came for the week, baby. Adrian, how did you Ibarra. do that? How do you do that thing where it's like like that? That I mean, that's just the magic of production back here. <laughs> 
I feel like I'm playing Castlevania right now. You know Castlevania? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or Double Dragon? Yeah. Or, or no, it was a Double Dragon? Wow, we're just we're just re-racking this thing. We're just going back and forth. Adrian Ibarra. I mean, he's getting his shine. He won he won hundred twelve dollars. Good for him. Dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. With what? Uh, uh, five dollars. His lineup was uh, <laughs> he had Borshev, Roy Val, Collier, uh, McGee, Kelleher, and T.J. Brown. That was the winning lineup this wow. week. Uh, yeah, this week I think we're gonna go big. I don't know if this is too uh, <laughs> too daring, too audacious. Uh, I think we're gonna go for a hundred person league this week. We did fifty last week, and a lot of people were actually chirping me in the. Uh, Why the, you could put a cap? Yeah, so, like, the thing is, you have to fill the league if it gets over 20. Everyone's always telling me, they're like, just check, don't fill the league, and it'll play. But, like, once it gets over 20 people, you have to fill the league. I don't know why that's a rule. What does that mean, you have to fill the league? Like, you have to, so, like, if we have a 50-person league, it has to get all 50 entrants, or it won't play. Everyone will just get their money back and it'll get canceled, yeah. So you're trying to be conservative. Right, but I was getting chirped pretty hard. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I was getting, I was getting chirped pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> in the uh, like, the, there's a chat in the in the DraftKings league. Everyone's oh my god! Like, oh, 50 spots. This is ridiculous. I, I come on. You think up. they're like GC? We spoke about this. SMH. Wow. Yeah, everyone's coming for me. So we're gonna do the hashtag road to 100 and try to get this thing to 100 we're gonna go bold it. this week so you think you could have got 100 last week i think i think the I quality know, of the know. card i think i think so too yeah. this is a pay-per-view i don't have the league up yet i can't start one for some reason in mma yet but as soon as i can i'm gonna get it up and i'm gonna push this thing hard because like saturday morning it was at like 41 and i was like uh. by the way you didn't tell me any of this i mean i would have given it a little muscle you know we're trying. We're trying to get the league to float on its own. Yeah. Okay. You don't need the hell money. All right. Fine. I'm just saying. I could have helped out. We'll I, need I the did, muscle this I week. I did retweet it, but it was just like a sort of retweet. You know. Yeah. Yeah, a, yeah. Maybe a call to action this well, week. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know there was a call to action needed. Uh, so 100 people. Wow. That's. And uh, did you do it? Yeah, I did it. And uh, had it work out. Know, I fell on my sword. I didn't put a lineup in. So you know. What? I, I donated $5 to the cause. What does that mean? You signed up, but you didn't actually put a lineup in? Yeah, I completely forgot to put a lineup Damn. in. Damn. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come Because I, automatic, I automatically join when I create the league, so. Then you forgot. Yeah, I forgot. I Damn. Blew it. All right. I blew it. But uh-huh. it was a valiant thing that I did. And how do people, people get the uh, the link to join the league? Yeah, I'll tweet it out. Okay. Yeah, I'll tweet out the link. It's nice. Yeah, well, I like that you guys do that. A uh, bit of breaking news here. This is interesting, Ooh. by the way. I... Uh, I had heard about this from someone inside, but was asked not to say anything. Uh, according to Rafael Marino of Combate, uh, Amanda Nunes has left American Top Team. I saw that to found her own team. Well, I'm doing the Google Translate here, so to 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 I guess you know start up her own team. Yeah, uh, Amanda Nunes. Yeah, and this is super interesting for multiple reasons. Number one, uh, Dan Lambert, who is the uh, founder of American Top Team has been her manager for a very long time. Uh, he has been a strong supporter of her, and for her to leave uh, makes me wonder if you know he's no longer going to represent her. Also, there was the whole thing with Kayla Harrison, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Does this does this open the door for a Kayla Harrison Amanda Nunez fight? Wow, which it, would mean Kayla Harrison is joining the UFC. Still heard as of right now that you know. That's a that's a long shot. I don't wow. think that they're going to be oh. able to pay what PFL is offering or even what Bellator wants to offer. To be honest, interesting. So she has to decide: does she want you know does she want the money to secure? And I don't say this begrudgingly. She just adopted two children. Like get the money, uh, especially as a female fighter who historically don't get paid what the men get paid. Take the money, or are you going for a legacy? I say take the money all day. You can't go to the bank and deposit a UFC belt. It's not going to do anything for you. Take yeah. the money, take the security, take the, you know, the big paycheck. But uh, this is very interesting that it has come to fruition. Doesn't say, but honestly, well, other than the starting her own squad, um, somewhat reminiscent of Francis and uh, Cyril, right? Yeah, maybe this is a down the line type thing then. Oh yeah, for sure. Wow, how about that? I think the uh, the Lambert part is uh, the part that a lot of people won't 
you know, notice right off the bat, but uh, it's sort of a, a three prong thing here. It's her leaving the team. It's the Lambert thing and the Kayla thing. So yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting. Some some breaking news there, and I'm curious to know. You know, sometimes when you lose a fight of that magnitude and you make these drastic wholesale changes, it doesn't bode well, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean she had all the success with ATT for all these years. And of course there could be a million things at play here. So who knows, you know, don't want to necessarily speculate until she speaks about it. But uh, you see like a team, a, a great football team or, you know, whatever, have all the success and then they, they lose one big game or even a, a, a fighter has all the success, loses one big fight, fire the head coach, whatever, fire the head trainer. And uh, sometimes it's not necessary, you know? Sometimes you just gotta get back on the horse. So. I think that's interesting. Wow. All I right. mean, it's very interesting, yeah. Doesn't and, beat Payne in a rematch? That would be crazy. Oh, my gosh. And Misha Tate said it herself. Of course, she's somewhat biased. She's friends with uh, Payne and has trained with her for a very long time. Uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with Dana White when he says that uh, that rematch is going to be the biggest in women's MMA history. I don't think it has that kind of juice. Um, I think even Ronda Misha, too, was a bigger fight. Uh, of course, like the many Invicta fights that you've watched over the years, some of them yeah. have, have rivaled that Obviously, one. Obviously, yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like Shevchenko and Nunez 3 would be bigger than Peña and Nunez 2. Wow, that's a hot take. Uh, Nunez prior to the loss? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah. I think the loss changes things a little bit. Uh, Nunez comes back and beats Peña and then faces Shevchenko. You don't think... You, I think that Nunez, Shevchenko 3 would be bigger than Peña and Nunez 2. Yeah, I think there is something to the fact that people want to know if like the Pena win was a fluke. Did she, right, yeah. you know, did she just have a better night? Did she have her number? Ah, it's tough. The, again, I go back to this. I go back to this. In order to have big fights, in order to have big draws, you got to sell the fight. And yeah. just historically, Amanda, for whatever reason, she's a lovely person. Like I'm not trying to rip on her, but like historically, she just doesn't yeah. sell the fight. She'll show up fight week. She'll do what she has to do, but there's not going to be much else there. And you need to get people emotionally invested. You need to get, I mean, like, just look at all the biggest draws in the fight game, boxing or MMA. You can't just show up. Like, even Canelo, who doesn't talk a lot of crap, who, like, he's, you see him. You see him pop up. He's present. He'll, he'll, he'll talk. He'll do stuff. She doesn't do anything. No media, no nothing. And and maybe, the, I mean, look, that's she's not complaining about her pay. She's not complaining about any of this stuff. So it's not one of these things where I'm like, well, you know, if you're complaining about your pay, you better point the finger at yourself. I'm not saying that. However, I'll just say I have a hard time believing that these fights will be the quote-unquote biggest of all time, women's MMA or not, if a major portion of this story doesn't want to sell the fight, doesn't yeah. want to partake in the promotion. That's I agree with that. I agree with that. Haney does a great job. I saw her last week with uh, Mario Lopez on the Ellen show. I guess Mario was uh, filling in for Ellen or something yeah. like that. But uh, Payne, uh, Payne is a great interview. I mean, I think she I... does a fantastic job. I yeah. did her for uh, uh, promo of the year promo at the MMA year. Hour Awards. That's right. Good call. Um, just taking a quick look here. Did you have another shout out person or uh, that was no, it? That was it, yeah. yeah. Got through everyone. No big hitter Hall of Fame, right? Nah, no Hall of Fame this week. There wasn't anything like insane. Obviously, huge bets, but uh, right. yeah, nothing like the like plus a hundred six thousand type stuff. Just looking quickly, uh, oh, so I see uh, uh, plus one fifty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, that's good. That's good. That is great. I don't even know how you did that. How's the crown done? The I mean, crown you see drop down. Like yeah, and then the the very underrated part that the listeners won't notice is the, yeah. the flashing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't put producer that, in my title for nothing. Yeah, I mean that is amazing. Value. Do you do you, do you like? <laughs> do you, have you ever played Nintendo? Have I ever played Nintendo? Yes. Yeah. No, like how, SNES. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. That's Super Nintendo. I'm talking. No, I haven't. SNES is the first I ever played. Okay, so you laugh. You didn't actually play what I was asking you. I Normal mean, Nintendo. The original, the gray one. You never yeah, played no, it. No. Wow. I mean, no. this is straight up. I don't need, like, would yeah. Super Nintendo look like that? Yeah, Super Nintendo. I, uh, What's that? Oh, okay. Frank's Frank's ch chiming in over here. <laughs> uh, we've got Frank filling in for New York Rick's oh. sitting next, right next to me. Oh, so let's just, put him on the screen. Yeah, you can chirp me. With a black uh, face, you know, like with yeah, the, the, blur him out, yeah, the, the blurred the, out the face. Thing. Uh, 
Yeah, he said that uh, SNES is 16-bit. Uh, oh. Nintendo is 8-bit. Now, he can't yeah. chime in himself with the microphone there? I think he wanted to speak for me. Okay. <laughs> there he is. By the way, why are you sitting in the back, Frank? Just uh, taking more of a supervisory role. Wow, look at this. Did you get a raise? Did you get a, a promotion? I don't to talk about that. Okay. Look at him. I mean, he comes close to me so he can just chirp. It's amazing. Uh, so I guess we're not going to be joined by Mr. Monday Afternoon. I think he thought it was Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I guess he just, I don't know. No, uh, New York Rick had a, a, a family issue, if you will, to attend to, but all is good, all is well. It was just sort of a logistical thing that he had to get to. The funny thing is, is that he walked in uh, earlier because he was here and I was like, oh, well, look who it is. It's Monday <laughs> afternoon. Look who decides. And he's and he said, how long are you going to keep up this 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 gimmick, this joke? And lo and behold, he doesn't show up today. Yeah, I yeah. mean, come on. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Uh, I think he might come on later. I don't know. Well, I mean, how long do you expect me to stay here? I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's your show. Guy. It's your show. Volkanovsky like, and I'm out. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's a federal holiday for God's sakes. It is a federal holiday. Yeah. I appreciate you all coming in, by the way. And happy... Uh, MLK Shout Junior out to Day. Box, turning the heat on. For yeah, me. that was a whole thing. Um, did the Knicks win? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. I know you don't want to talk. Oh, they lost. Oh, we won't talk nice. about that. Big win on Saturday against uh, your Atlanta Hawks. Any thoughts on Cam Reddish? Shall we talk about that? Yeah, or? I was actually kind of bummed, honestly, that we yeah. lost him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Miles Bridges went like crazy on y'all. Yeah, 38-12-5. Oh. and five. Sheesh. Well, I was just going to say, before we get to uh, Mr. Volkanovsky, uh, Surreal Gan, a plus... Uh, excuse me, a minus 155 at the moment. Francis Ngannou, a plus 135. Yeah, yeah, that man. That is interesting. Yeah, man. I'm looking at uh, our good friends. How about this? Okay, not that long ago. I was looking at the last... They, they got a great thing on best fight odds the last time someone was... Uh, you know, they'll, they'll give you like the history of all their sure. lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last time Francis was an underdog was the Cain Velasquez fight in uh, February of 2019, coincidentally, the first card on ESPN. I was there, actually. I was in Bristol. Chael and I came on right after the event. It was very funny because in the promos, they had to ignore that I was there, too. So, you know, like when they come out of commercial, they're like, coming up next on Sports Center, Chael yeah. Sonnen will be in studio. I was like, you know I'm here, too, guys. Yeah, I'm right here. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. But we did get to uh, kick off Sports Center from Bristol, the only time that we ever got to do that. So that's the last time, but he hasn't been... A dog. Yeah, I think I had to make cuts for that sports center for game night that night. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. How about this? Full circle. Um, yeah. I mean, prior to that, the Blades fight, he was a favorite. The Derek Lewis fight, he was a favorite. The Stipe fight, which is super interesting when he was yeah. the underdog, he was the favorite. So maybe that bodes well for him in this fight where he's the champion. Uh, excuse me. When he was, the, he was the underdog, he was the underdog. He was the challenger. He was the underdog. In this fight, he is the champion and he's the underdog. Uh, the Alistair fight, he was a pretty big favorite. The Arlovsky fight, he was a big favorite. Yeah. The Nganu fight, he was a favorite. Is this just the second time? Yeah, I don't uh, know. Like, I don't know like what to do with this fight. Like, I, I just have no idea who's gonna win. Like, I could. Uh, Sirogan's obviously incredible. Nganu obviously has that knockout power. I couldn't, with a good conscience, take Sirogan now because I stared at it at minus one ten, minus one ten, like mm -hmm. all holiday break. And now it's minus 155 at DraftKings Sportsbook. So, like, I just like I, I just feel like I missed out on the Cyril Gone party if I was mm -hmm. going to ride that way. I mean, like, what's the number? Like, how big does it have to get before I just have to take Francis Ngannou just based on the fact that, like, he can end anybody's night at any second? Like, Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm a little surprised here. By the way, just to finish I mean, the people thought. Are like, be betters love Cyril Gone this week. Two other fights, uh, he's been the underdog. Um, Curtis Blades in 2016, he was a plus 100, and then Luis Henrique, which I believe was his debut, but I could be wrong. Um, he was plus 110. I have to say, what's so funny? Yeah, no, Frank's just trying to oh, you're trying to chime in. I I have to say, I get it. I understand because of how good Gan looks, yeah. Yeah, because of how he's been, because of how young he is, all that stuff, and because you know the the history. The one, forget about all that. The thing that worries me the most about Nganu is well, for whatever reason, when you battle the UFC, they yes. always come on out on top. Right. And, and I just feel like there's a lot going on this week. There's a there lot is. of pressure. Yeah. You know, hey, I'm not going to fight for five, 600 anymore and all this stuff. It's a lot of pressure. Right. Like he, he needs to win. Like, oh, of course you know, he needs to back to win. everything up. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I guess I can't really come out mad because I got the serial future. So, like, him kicking off the year as a champion would be pretty nice for that. And then, of course, uh, we got the big co-main event, uh, Davis and Figueredo, a plus 155 yeah. against yeah, Brandon like Moreno. player's head is that? Yeah? You going Figgy? Maybe. Wow. I mean, I still got to do a little more research. Sure, sure, sure. Figgy, uh, and the last time these two gentlemen fought, which was back in June, of course, Figueredo showed up super late to the weigh-ins and looked like he wasn't in the the best of shape. Um, that was UFC 263 back in June, June 12th, 2021. He was a minus 240 favorite, how wow. the tide has turned. Yeah, and the tide has turned. And Moreno was a plus 205. First fight, Figueredo minus 275, Moreno plus 235. So, by the way, looking at Figueredo, last time he was a dog going into a fight, he was a favorite against Perez, favorite against Benavidez, favorite against Elliott, um, favorite against Pantoja, favorite against Formiga, favorite against Moraga, favorite against Morales, underdog against Jared Brooks, and then underdog in the first Benavidez fight. So, interesting right. times. All yeah, right. It's going to be an interesting card. So, on it's Wednesday, we'll be back and you'll give us uh, your official picks. Yes, that is what we'll do, and we've uh, we've got the champ. Alex we've got the champ. Oh line. boy, I am looking forward to this. Me too. I am really looking forward to this. At the Australian Open yesterday, was he really? Yeah. Sorry about Novak. Yeah. Yeah. Weird like one. Call him Novax. Come on. Oh wow, oh, that's my guy. Wow, oh, I have to say God. that is pretty damn. I mean, that is clever. That I'm is just trying clever. to stop greatness. Wow, okay. Where did you see that he was at? You, he was just sitting there? You saw an interview or something? Well, my girlfriend's working it, and she said that he was there. Oh, he shout out. Like okay. the highlighted people, so. Is your girlfriend there? Nah. She's doing Remote? Bristol, yeah. Do they, so. even, do they even go? They used to, and now they don't anymore because of COVID, so she has to work overnights because you have oh to. Oh, my God, yeah, because of the time zone. I mean, it's just terrible. And, and, and what about uh, the broadcasters? Are they there? The broadcasters are there, yeah. Okay, but the production isn't. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we'll ask Alex about that. Thank you very much, GC. We'll see you on uh, Wednesday. Do we have the champ here? I am looking forward to this. Wow, okay, we got the champ. Uh, I mean, is there a more talked about man in MMA right now than this man? Everyone's coming after him. We thought it was going to be Max Holloway, then it wasn't Max Holloway, then it was, you know, Henry coming after him, Josh Emmett coming after him, Yair coming after him, Zombie coming after him. Who isn't coming after this man? Apparently, he was at the uh, Australian Open. Without further ado, let us say hello to the one and only Alex, the great Volkanovsky, the most wanted man in the sport. There he is. How are you, Alex? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It, it, they, all, uh, they all come out, didn't they? I mean, it's good to be the king, I suppose, when you're sitting at the top of the hill. Everyone wants a piece. You were at the Australian Open yesterday. That's the word on the street. Apparently, you were spotted. Yes, I was. Yeah, I was there. Good man. I'm down here, down in Melbourne. But I had to do a couple of gigs down here. So, yeah, it was cool. It was good to watch. So, um, wow. Okay. Let's, uh, let's start with this. I want to work in chronological order, Alex. I have so many questions for you. I think everyone does. And I really appreciate you coming on, especially in the morning. You know, I always say, I always appreciate you guys when you come early in the morning. So, um, we get word that it's you and Max March 5th. Was that a little premature, by the way, that announcement? Like, were you just told, I, I was kind of told that it was like, it kind of came out of the blue, that one. Or were you uh, up to speed on that one? Just before the injury to Max, just the initial announcement. Well, like, yeah, yeah, it was. Because uh, we knew about it. Obviously, it was going to happen. It was uh, locked in and and then it got out there. Which, like, the whole thing was, a, you know, was a bit funny and a uh, weird process to, to what, I, what I guess what we were used to. But yeah, it did come a little bit early. Uh, but uh, I was like, yeah, whatever. I don't mind it when it, when it comes out early, you know, so we can start hyping up that fight um, earlier. So I, I was all good with it, but then uh, then the next day, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just... What was your crazy. reaction when you heard that he was now out of the fight? I was disappointed. You know, the boys uh, called me and they made sure Joe rang me, like, you know, just because uh, they knew I'd be a, you know, bit... Man, I just... I was really looking forward to that fight. I really was, uh, and you know, just just started. Or you know, you know, I was ready to get in the camp and you know, get thing get things going, and uh, you know, end that chapter and all that type of stuff. But you know, uh, as 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 everyone says, well, bless says uh, it is what it is. But it's you know, it's a, it was unfortunate. You know, obviously, it's a big fight. And a lot of people wanted to see it, but what do you do? That'll just have to wait till later. So uh, we'll see what happens. And so when you find out that he's now not fighting, did you want to stay on that date, March 5th, or did you not have a preference? 
yeah, I wanted to, I mean, uh, I made it clear straight after my fight, I wanted to fight regularly, you know what I mean? Even fighting in March was later than I would have liked because uh, I wanted to, you know, I want to get some uh, some defences in. I want, in. I want to fight as, as much as I can this year. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to get whoever we could um, on the march. But uh, as you said, there was uh, plenty of options, plenty of people carrying on. Uh, but, you know, that's that's how I am. I'm an easy, I'm an easy cheap and understand. You would know. Like, you know what I mean? Whoever's, whoever's that number one guy or next in line, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, and if you're ranked number eight or if you're coming off losses or you're retired and things like that, it doesn't make sense. But, I mean, if you're the closest guy in the rankings that's coming off a win or something like that, easy. that's an easy decision. It's the only one that, that, that makes makes sense. So, it was pretty funny seeing everyone carrying on. I know you're going to ask some questions anyway, so I'll let you, I'll let you ask him rather than okay. rumble on. And then I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, were you approached about zombie, or was that your idea or your team's idea? Uh, well, yeah, the team. The team obviously bring it up. We we had a conversation uh, pretty much as soon as we found out the news. So uh, you know, we'll uh, obviously you know rattle about that, but we're like, all right, well, you know, we want to. We don't want to change the day. We don't want to wait till, you know, he recovers or anything like that. You know what I mean? So we were like, what do we do? So we just, uh, you know, the boys, the boys talked and then they chat to me uh, and they were just, you know, the early one that makes sense. And again, they know, they know what I'm like. You know what I mean? Just again, the, and if I was going to fight guys that, that don't really deserve it, you know, that, that, or that, I don't like that. That's not what I'm, what I'm about. You know what I'm about? Uh, about, yeah, the guys that make sense. He's an OG of the sport. You talk about legacy, like he's you know he's one of the one of the like biggest names in the in the division that we've had as well. You know, I want to I want to take out all the guys. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, you've got all the the guys that I face. You know, the legends of of the featherweight division, and he's one of them. So uh, again, and, and he's uh, coming off a win, a good win off uh, Dean Ige, and uh, Dean Ige, sorry, and um, yeah, so it's the only one that makes sense, and that's why we wanted it. Yeah, and he's won three of four. Like you said, uh, he has looked good. Um, and I know that you guys have been sort of, you know, going like dating back two years now almost. You guys have been going back and forth. So there, there's some heat there, right? It's 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 not quite the max fight, but if you go into the archives, I mean, I remember talking to you about him in 2020. I remember talking to him about you in 2020. You guys haven't really seen eye to eye. So it's it's somewhat personal as well, correct? Oh, of course it is. You know what I mean? Uh, there was a, a time where, you know, he... Uh, I guess decided to, to play the heel or his manager yes. or someone did it anyway. Yes. And uh, you know, and, and he was there calling us out and saying some things. Uh so yeah, there is there is a bit of history there. But you gotta remember, like that was uh before that's why he was fighting for that number one contender when uh, Brian and him fought. Uh so it shows you that you know he was close to that title shot. Uh but you know, it didn't go his way. So that's why I fought Brian. And now he's uh went back and did what he had to do and and he's lucky like, obviously, you know, if uh, Max didn't pull out. None of these guys would, would be getting, uh, getting an opportunity maybe. We don't know, but that's what happened. So uh, I, want, I want to fight. And uh, UFC wanted, to, wanted us to still fight. So we all agreed that uh, Zombie was, was the guy to do. And again, there is a bit of history. He's an OG of the, the division. So uh, just, yeah, let's make that happen. So I'm going to put him off to the side here for a second. And I want to ask you about a, a young man named Giga Chikadze. Uh, he oh, was. Let's, let's get into it, Ariel. Let's get into it. Let's go. He was very vocal. <laughs> Where do we start? Oh my gosh! And I said it on this show last week, Alex. Before the fight, I said the disrespect shown to Calvin Cater this week is astounding. We're talking about Giga versus Alex. The guy's fighting on Saturday. Can we wait at least till Sunday to talk about it? What are you thinking when you're hearing Giga? Not just. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, a lot of it was disrespect. I mean, it was it was like personal. He was calling you all kinds of names and stuff like that when he's fighting on Saturday. How did you internalize this? Well, there's a there's a few guys that went a, a little uh, disrespectful about it. But I mean, look, there's going to be people that are going to trash talk and all that. It's a part of the game. We understand that. But there was a, there was there's other sides to it, and then there is real disrespect, not only to me, but to Calvin Cater as mm. well. Like you know, you've got a, a man, a top contender in front of you and you're acting like you're just going to walk through this guy, not only let's win first before you start carrying on, uh, what you know, you're probably going to get injured. It's not, the fight's not too far away and all that. Like there's so many things that, that come into play. And then, you know, he's just sitting there, obviously the chump and oh, whatever. I don't really care about that. But trying to say, you know, you take an easy way and then disrespecting zombie like you did, uh, just disrespecting everybody. 
You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the full uh, situation with that. You know, because I've uh, I've talked to Giga, and he's a uh, you know he's not, not too bad of a guy. He was uh, he's saying like you know I'm looking forward. You know, and he, I said, mate, keep doing what you're doing. I remember having that conversation with him. Keep doing what you're doing, and uh, it's going to happen. Uh, but then you know uh, he started. Uh, I know he maybe just thought that's what the way was the way to go about it. You know, yeah. he started uh, carrying on, and uh, you know a lot of people are like man, like you know, pull up like you better win. This is going to look real bad and. You know what I mean? Well, I think it was a bad choice because now he just looks like a bit of an idiot. And then he's uh, carrying on even uh, to Zombie. Zombie, all he does, I think he did like a one yeah. of them emojis. Like, right. who wasn't thinking that? Right. You know, the way you were carrying on, who wasn't thinking that? And then, you know, you, you start going uh, going off. Uh, if you're going to play that game, you gotta you got to expect that criticism. you got to expect uh, people are going to buy it. You know, just if that's the, if that's the game you want to play, then play it the whole way. Don't, uh, don't, don't uh, get upset when uh, people start uh, rubbing it in your face. And sticking with Giga for a second, as he was talking all week, even before the fight, was there any part of you who was like, if this dude wins, F this, I want his ass. I want to fight him because now he's he's talking a lot. Did you ever feel that way in, at any point? Man, I did like, to be honest, if he was carrying on, like not only he has to win yeah. for him to even start talking, you know, let's let's try and get out of that fight unscathed before you even ask. Right. But then I still don't think he deserves it. Remember, he's ranked number eight. Right. He was ranked number eight. And he was fighting rank number five. You know, these guys that he's calling, like, acting like, you know, he's so surprised that I was fighting zombie. These guys are ranked above higher than him. Yeah. We're going to be ranked higher than him even when if he won. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, again, yeah, you've got a winning streak, but let's let's fight some contenders. Let's fight some top guys. And you did, and look what happened. Like, you know what I mean? Again, like, obviously, everyone, every time you don't pick someone, they're going to try and say you're scared and, and whatnot. Look at the people up for. I know. Look at the guys up for. It's crazy. And you're, you're an absolute idiot if you think that I, I dodge fights. Who's going to give, you know, Max Holloway's proved he's the next best guy. I'm giving him the trilogy after winning twice. Yeah. Who does that? Only guys that know that they've got the skills to, to keep winning, he's going to do that. The guys that don't give a fuck, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guys that... That, yeah, have balls and going to do what they need to do. Again, like, uh, that's it's just plain and simple. I'm an easy, uh, easy champ to understand. I ain't running from nobody. Earn that number one spot and you can get it. So, mate, we've got plenty to talk about because there's a few guys carrying on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm to getting to them. Yeah, all right, yeah. But, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let you ask before okay. I start fucking going in on all of them, mate. Okay, uh, just uh, one Okay, one more on Giga. What did you think of the fight, though? Um, were you were you impressed yeah. with Cater? Yeah, look, look, uh, obviously I was impressed with certain things. That Cater did. Um, again, I go deep with, with a lot of things, and uh, it just shows you that, you know, Cater can change a bit of his game to, you know, work a game plan. So he changed his game a lot, you know, changing his stances and mm -hmm. things like that to take away the kick from Giga, which absolutely rattled Giga. Um, it, but even though I thought Cater was very vulnerable in Southpaw when he would creep in like that, he was very vulnerable, but he literally, Giga did not know what to do. So I was very impressed that he, you know, he uh, sort of uh, changed a bit of his game, even went to things that, you know, he's not used to, to nullify his opponent. You know what I mean? I thought that was great. Um, I thought they both gassed. Uh, you know, I thought Cater could have, you know, I was really thought well, at one point, like, oh, Cater's just going to mow it down now. Like, this is, this is going to be just easy work. But I think they both slowed down a little bit. But Cater, you know, to make them adjustments uh, for the, that fight, you know what I mean, to change, to change his game a little bit, uh, to nullify what uh, Giga thought that was good. You know, I mean, not many uh, fighters uh, can do that or will do that or know to do that. So that was uh, that was impressive. Um, but again, you know what I mean? Uh, I can uh, critique it all uh, as well. You know, I'm a bit of a bit of a critic. I feel like, uh, could you imagine if I was in front of, uh, <laughs> of, of I guess, both of these guys? And I, I don't want to throw shade on uh, Kato after a great win, but I just mean like these guys slowing down and using, everyone knows I don't slow down. But I think it was a big, big eye opener for 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 Giga. You know what I mean? That, uh, mate, get guys out. You can't just rely on a kick. You know the Giga kick, man. Like it, it just shows you. You nullify his Giga kick, and he ends up being a punching bag. You know what I mean? It was a. Uh, it's again, just man. That's why you got to fight these contenders. Fight all the top guys, guys that are going to mix it up. See, see where you are. See, you know what I mean? Before you start facing the champ, you could imagine. You know when you talk about. Making adjustments, game planning, cardio, all these tools that I have, mate, I would have, I would have made him look really, really bad. And you know what I mean? You, you could, you could imagine. So before you want to take out these types of guys, let's experiment with some of these good guys and see where you're at. 
and he showed that you know he's he's not he's not really uh, at that level. You know he needs to go back and hopefully you know man, to be honest, even though he was carrying on, you know I was like oh, it'll be funny if he gets bashed, but I was like look man, fresh blood as well. He goes out there and wins mm-hmm. and wins again. You know everyone's going to be screaming his name. There was a lot of people screaming his name already when he didn't even deserve it. So I want this I want this new blood. You know I did want that in a way as well, but um, you know again. For him to earn that shot, he had to fight uh, guys that are that that know what they're doing, and it didn't work out for him. So then, obviously, now no one's going to be talking about him. But we'll see. Kader Kader uh, done a great fight. You got to remember his last fight was against the number one contender. So uh, you know he he's up there. So uh, you know we'll just we'll just see we'll see what happens. There's a lot of guys up up the top now, and man, it's just, it's a it's a it's a very uh, stacked division. You know, yeah. it really is. It, there's a lot happening. Is you can see why there's a lot of people uh, trying to call for the shot because uh, they're made, it. which is good. It's good to know that we're we're going to have options very soon. There's no clear number one other than than, than Max. That's why Max was going to get it. But I mean, there is guys that are just there. Mm. You know what I mean? And then this injury for Max. You know what I mean? If a couple of guys get fights in, mate, they're all going to be screaming their name. Like you know, it depends how long Max is out for. But you know, I'm guessing that they're just going to make this happen a bit later, but you get guys go out there and win and take that number one spot, you never know what the UFC going to do. So uh, it just shows you how uh, stacked our division is and uh, how fun it is uh, is getting as well. And then we get to Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo, (laughs) who is uh, making all kinds of headlines, who really wants this fight. And my take on it, Alex, and I can't wait to hear yours, I don't think, Alex, if this is presented to him, this is what I said, turns this down. Now, we know what you believe in and what you say. You know, you say you want guys who are earning it and all that. I don't think you turn it down because he's a big name and it's historical and all that. And he was all mad at you. And I said his criticism and his frustration was misdirected. It's the UFC that's not calling his number. It's the UFC. And now I think he realizes that and now he's going after Dana White. What did you think of what was going on there with Henry? Because he became more vocal than ever. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, that's, look, that's him. I don't even mind, I don't mind the guy. Obviously, we, we have a bit of fun and you know he's always uh, trying to you know, troll me and, uh, you know, get out of my skin and make that fight happen. I didn't, you know, I, I'm sure if, you know, if it was offered to him to get a chance to just go straight to to the featherweight, um, I don't even know if he is in the testing pool. Uh, I'm not sure if he is, but so I don't know how serious he is, but he seems like he's serious about it. But, um, but again, you know what I mean? Like, again, people are going to say, am I, I'm running and whatnot. And like, mate, the, the UFC never bring up his name ever. You know, it was never mentioned to me. It was never even close to an option. You know what I mean? And you know, how am I going to take it serious if the UFC don't take it serious? And I don't even know if Henry's really taking it serious. But man, I like the guy. He's got great skills. But you know what I mean? You've you've done great things in other divisions, uh, and you retired. And uh, you know, so it's just it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Obviously, you're getting some people that are that were like, yeah, Henry, 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 but. It just, you know, it just doesn't doesn't make sense. Look, if there was ever a time that was going to do it, probably would be now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, again, the UFC were, were never going to bring it up. You know, uh, you know, they're thinking that what's the point? You don't, you don't, you don't deserve it. And then, what if you do somehow get it done? You're just going to retire and do that, even though uh, I heard Henry's like, oh, I won't do that. I'll stay. And you know, you know I don't think they they believe that, but. You wouldn't have to worry about that anyway, uh, uh, Dana, if you're watching. But, <laughs> but man, look again. I don't mind the bloke. I don't mind the bloke. He's actually he's a, a good guy, and I've listened to a couple of his interviews. And uh, when he's talking about fighting, that's what he's talking about. He's good. He's got the skills. He's got the game plans and, and things like that. So I've got, I've got respect for Henry. But um, yeah, it just it's no no point even wasting it. That's why I don't waste too much energy on it. If they would have come to you and said, "We want to do this big fight, Henry Zahudo versus." Alex Volkanovsky, a chance for Henry to win three titles in three different weight classes. Do you say yes, you think? If the money makes sense and all that other stuff, like, are you open to it? Money or, makes sense and all that type or, of stuff. Or do you believe, timing. yeah, no, or do you, like, if it was this, if it was this fight, or do you believe, like, hey, man, because Dana said it on Saturday, like, go win a fight at 135, win that belt, and then maybe you could talk about moving up, but you can't cut all these dudes in a weight class that you've never fought in. That's essentially what his stance seems to be. Yeah, man. Well, that, that, that's exactly right. Look, if they if they were to bring it forward mm-hmm. and uh, want to push it, would at least talk about it. You know, would at least talk about it. And again, it would be a timing thing, which could have been now because of what happened. Obviously, you know, for if uh, Max didn't get injured and we weren't 
you know, we again, we wanted to fight as soon as possible. So, um, you know, that was probably a time for someone to, to get a chance. You know what I mean? And that's why everyone knows that. That's why everyone, everyone come out of the woodworks and expect a, a title shot. But, uh, you know, it's, it just, yeah, they're, they're not taking it serious. But if the UFC were to come come to me, you know, we'd at least maybe talk about it. But, you know, I'm not taking it seriously if uh, barely anyone's taking it seriously, especially the UFC. So why we'll waste some energy on it? And then especially we had, when I've got a whole heap of killers, sure. a whole heap of killers in my division that want to come try and take the crown off me. And then we had your year call you out as well. I mean, it was like a historic week of call outs. I mean, I don't know if anyone's been called out that much in the span Look, of two days. Yeah. Man, like you had a, a lot of people call out and you had people call out respectfully. Um, you know, you had like Josh Emmett, uh, yeah. a few guys just putting their hand up, you know, not carrying on, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, so uh, I give them respect for that. You know, you've got guys that earn the spot, earn the earn the shot more than others and they're not even carrying on. But then you got, uh, you know, you had like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like one thing that, that surprises me and, and what annoys me, he, the way he acted about it as if it was a no-brainer that he should be the next in line. I'm like, and then starts carrying on and, and like swearing and saying, I had respect and fuck you and all this type of stuff. I'm like, are you, are you serious? <laughs> okay, let's remember, like, like okay, let, 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 me, let me bring you back. Let me, let's, let's be real for a second. What, over two years, you're, you're pretty much running from the bit? I didn't want to bring that up, but I mean, you you put me here, you put me here. So you're running from Zabit, pulling out, you know, you're getting suspended from Yasada, you've been a diva, and then the UFC had so much hassles with you, that, you know what I mean? Like you could imagine. So it was a, a bunch of chaos. So the UFC aren't going to take that serious. And then, let's remember, he just lost. I, I don't get it. Like I just really, I really don't get it. You, you haven't fought for how long, uh, then you're coming off a loss, and then you you get angry at me because I don't sit there and call you out. Like, yeah, man, it just it just blows me away. So it's the way that some of these people went. I don't mind the guy. Whether he just thought that was his way of getting the title shot, maybe I don't know. But I mean, if if he's being real, he's like, "Fuck you, I respect you, uh, mate. You're gonna carry on like, say it to my face, if you really want to carry on like that." Or was it just trying to get the shot? You know, build a bit of hype. I don't know. But if if that's uh, really what you feel about it. Yeah, bring that same energy in person as well. You know what I mean? Because uh, hey, I didn't do enough wrong. You're the one that didn't fight for over two years and you're the one that's coming off a loss. Uh, you want to get angry and, and carry on? Whatever. But look, again, it's, I guess when you're at the top, this happens. So, uh, you know, it's all good. Is it hard you know, not to respond again, to all these guys? At the time, at the time, I'll be honest, at the time, I'm like, I just, I can't believe it because I'm just, I'm bred, I don't know if I'm bred different, but, or, you know, it's just my mentality. Like, we've had plenty of conversations there and you know you know what I'm like yeah. I'm always talking about earning it you know what I mean go and, go and earn that number they let it be given to you that's my mentality you know what I mean I'm the, I'm the type of guy that rather than crying like a little girl if you know and things like that I'm going to go and earn that that number one spot by taking out the number one contenders take out whoever I have to to put me there so there's no one else in front of me that's what I'm like and then I start hearing all these guys uh, carrying on like that and you know mate, let me tell you this Ariel I'm going to be champion for a long time. The mentality I have compared to some of these guys, the way they go about things and the way they just want things given to them. He has a good example for that. Dodging fights just so he could get find an easier way to the title shot and carrying on like he did now. You think you're going to beat me with that mentality? That's why I'm champion for a long time because uh, the mentality I have and the guy I am and the guy you know that's going to be turning up in the gym doing what he has to do, even as a champ, I'm going to be doing what I need to do to make sure I stay on top. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm still more eager than these guys chasing the chasing the crowd because that's just me. That's just who I am. That's what I'm all about. These guys want to be, uh, you know, carry on like little princesses um, and just expect things given to them. But when you have that attitude, you, you ain't going to get nowhere in life. So whatever. But, I mean, uh, you know, Korean Zombie, he didn't carry on. Mm. Um, and I thought, you know, we thought he deserved it. UFC thought he deserved it. And a lot of people thought he deserved it. Again, he's OG. You know what I mean? Everyone's been watching him for for a long time. I can't wait to be uh, listen to his music coming out. You know what I mean? It's, it's iconic. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That shit gets me going. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that. But again, enough with everyone. Uh, you know, they carried on. Maybe they just thought that was the way to get that shot. Maybe they thought they can get me angry and I'll be like, oh, I want this guy. But you know what I mean? The guy I am is more important. You know what I mean? It's guys that deserve it. You know, that, that, that's who should get it. And, uh, you know, the reason why 
anyone even has a chance to get this this type of show is because someone got injured. But I mean, there's some of them that understand that, and then there's some of them that just carry on and think that shit should be given to them uh, their whole life. But that's a loser mentality. Was it hard not to respond to everyone when they're all coming at you with the insults and making it personal, or do you just let it roll off your back? Um, it, it was hard. I was about to just go, what? Like, yeah. pretty much what I just said to you, but probably a little bit more aggressive. You know? I know. Like a, probably, would have, probably would have swore a little bit more, you know, and carried on a little bit more. Because, man, it just blows me away. Like, how people, like, literally, not only were they, not only were they calling the shot when they should have, the fact that they couldn't believe that they were the next guy that, that should have been, like, I mean, and just the, the way, like, what makes you even think that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, whether you're retired, whether you're ranked number eight, or whether you're coming off a loss and haven't fought for over like two years, you know what I mean? I just where where are you where are you getting this from? What makes you feel like you're that guy? I don't, I just don't understand it. So that that really burned me, and I just wanted to just get a bit of a reality check to them. But again, you gotta you gotta calm down. They, you know you don't you don't ever know the story. Um, it could be someone else on the Instagram. Uh, you know, yeah. Like, or which uh, we we pretty we we know pretty much uh, that was uh, the case in some of them, but not just that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not just that like maybe they thought that's the way they get the title shot so uh you know do you have the, you know sometimes you, you see the stuff on twitter and then sometimes you see people in person it's different you know so maybe maybe you know maybe it will be different when they're in person like, Look, man, i just wanted that shot you know no disrespect mm-hmm. but you know maybe who knows i don't know but yeah there's a lot of guys that did deserve it and that's why they didn't get it so it, it looks like april 9th uh it sounds like maybe jacksonville is that what you're hearing as well do you um, I've been I've been down Melbourne uh, working a bit down here, so I, I haven't I haven't heard uh, nothing. Okay, fair enough. So fair uh, enough. yeah, that, that's 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 news to me. All right, well, I'm happy to share some news with you. Um, by the way, speaking of, uh, can I ask you? You know, I'm not trying to get political here, but is there a part of you that worries that your days of fighting in Australia, you know, with this whole thing that happened with Novak Djokovic, that you may never get a chance to fight in Australia again, or that it might be tail? Like, do you think about that at all because of? Uh, how I mean, this was this was a pretty crazy story that happened. I don't say crazy in a bad way, good way. I'm not casting any sort of aspersions, but it does seem like if you are unvaccinated, you cannot compete in Australia. And let's be honest, a lot of MMA fighters aren't. Um, are you worried that this might affect your ability to fight at home, or do you not care? I mean, like obviously I care, but I mean it's just we're just we're just in this uh, situation just right now. I feel like that's gonna that's gonna change. Okay. Um, I think things uh, will will move on. So uh, I'm so hopeful of <laughs> obviously the defending my belt, and I'm hoping it's uh, the one after this one um, we could do it. And I think it, it's going to happen. You know, I I really, I really do. Um, but yeah, it was it was a big story. Uh, you know, I didn't uh, look too much into it, but I mean, it was everywhere. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's why obviously the UFC aren't, aren't bringing it here yet. You know, yeah. There's a lot of uh, a lot of hurdles across. Uh, so I think just time time will be uh, what we need with with all that. Uh, I asked uh, Robert Whitaker about this last week, and I just wanted to ask you, I know you guys were on the set of that uh, that fight show in uh, Australia, and he, he said the stuff about Kai Kyra France, he, like he didn't want to be fake towards him, but you were sitting there, so you had, was that awkward at all for you because he's fighting Izzy, or are you able to separate that and, and be cool with him? Oh, man, like it's, look, I'm cool with everybody. That's mm. just how I am. I get along with everybody, and I've known Rob, Rob a long time. But obviously, you know, Izzy's a... a you know, like, like a teammate of mine. So you got to, that's the difference. You know, I'm always, a lot of people are like, oh, he's Aussie. They're, yeah, Aussie. But then you've got like family, you know what I mean? Especially how we are with our training partners, the same as at our gym, at Freestyle Fighter, Gym and City Kickbox. There's a real family feel. The blood, sweat and tears, it's different. You know what I mean? And like, and, uh, you know, so that's why, you know, yeah, he's, he's my boy. You know what I mean? And, uh, and Rob knows that. So Rob was just like, you know, uh, I, I'm different. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm the type of guy where, it doesn't matter for me. Like I, I can get along with everyone. Business is business. You know what I mean? And, you know, some people just, uh, do things a little differently. So I wouldn't say it was awkward, but I mean, yeah, it was, a uh, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit, but I mean, probably, I guess more, more awkward for him rather than me. Okay. Just the fact that he felt awkward made me maybe be like, Oh, okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Cause, uh, I'm, well, I'm different again. Business is business. Are you going to be able you know, to go if to- I, if, uh, Sorry, go ahead. What was that? Nah. No. Oh, I was just gonna say, are, are you gonna be able to go to CKB for this camp? Uh nah. No, nah, we have things that are going on over there as well. So obviously, yeah. it's still strict over there. And, yeah. Uh so yeah, that that won't be happening. 
Okay. But, I mean, we can travel everywhere in Australia, so we can get a lot of training partners uh, around here. But, I mean, we just bring everyone to, to our – that's what we've done the last, like, three camps. So, um, yeah, so it, it'll be good. It'll be good to go back there when, whenever we can, but that's just uh, not happening. Okay. Uh, man, I got to tell you, the Cooking with Volk uh, videos are just – some. Of, when I, <laughs> honestly, when it pops up, I get excited. When I see it on the feed, I get legit excited. I mean, I, the production I'm due value. for one. Actually, I'm due for one. I'm Are you? Yeah. One. The one where you were at the beach with your family and you caught the fish yourself. And then, I mean, I couldn't believe that. You're you're actually yeah, like man. skinning these things yourself. That's it. No, mate, I'm, the, I'm telling you. Man, I'm just a, a again, real man's man. man. Yeah, that's it, mate. The guy I was 10 years ago, mate, is the guy I am today. I just got a, a nice shiny belt. And I so happen to kick ass as well, you know what I mean? But no, I love my fish and I love my adventure. I love my cooking. You know, I'm not the best cook. I ain't no chef. But I have fun with it and I just like to record it. And I like to, have, you know, I, I like to have fun with it. And that's what I think people get. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's uh, chefs looking at it and be like, man, that's terrible. I don't know how to plate food for shit. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm not, I'm not about presentation. I'll be honest with you. I ain't about presentation. I'm all about the, the, t- the taste. But um, but yeah, man, I enjoy it. You know, I just try all, di- all different things and, you know, some things are just like, oh, let's see how this goes. You know what I mean? I'll try crazy different tips and on chicken wings and all that type of stuff. Or crisps, I don't know what you guys call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, just, yeah. So well, I just have fun with it, man. I love it. And the people seem to love it, man. I love it. People go nuts about it. It's so, entertaining. And honestly, enjoy. you make it seem so easy. I'm like, oh, I could do this, even though I can definitely not. I mean. That's the whole point as well. Yeah, so yeah. We, we keep it easy, nice and short and anyone can do it. Okay. Anyway. Last question before I let you go. I saw some footage. This really caught my eye. Uh, you were hanging out with some basketball stars over there in Australia. I know basketball is big over there. Uh, you know, historically the MMA fighters aren't great basketball players. We didn't see a lot of footage of you actually shooting and you know doing the drills. But how did that go? How, how would you rate your skills with those guys? Mate, there's a, there is some footage out there. Okay. And they made me look good. It made me look good, which I'm thankful for. But mate, I can't shoot for shit. <laughs> I used to think I used to think I was good. I used to think like, yeah, yeah, I'm because I'm a competitive guy. I'm good at everything, you know. Yeah. That's how I'm like. But I'll I'll tell you now that yeah, yeah, shooting hoops isn't my thing, man. The last few times I've did it, we've had a camera that's been for embedded, or we're doing uh, yeah things with the Illawarra Hawks. We're doing some promos for them, and I had to do one just the other day. There was a Under Armour and. Um, uh, Steph Curry doing their collab. So we had to do this uh, shoot like uh, Steph. Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, and so we had to do that. We had to shoot shoot some threes, oh. shoot some threes and uh, to raise money. And I'm like, man, like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel bad. You know, how am I going to raise some money? So I was like, I'll just, <laughs> if I miss them, I'll just pull money out of my own pocket and uh, pretend I shot some hoops. But um, we ended up, end up raising the money. So that, that, that was good. But, man, I can't, I can't shoot the shit. I don't know what it is about MMA fighters. You guys can't shoot basketballs. It's crazy. I mean, John Jones. Go find footage of John Jones shooting a basketball. It's one of the most incredible things you've ever seen. Has no idea. You know what it is? It's the finesse in the fingers. Oh. Okay. You know what I mean? It's that, the finesse, you know, the finishing little touches. Yeah. yeah. We ain't about finesse you know? the fingers, mate. <laughs> it's all about the closed fist. That's right. That's a good point. You know what I mean? We're, we're a bit too aggressive. We're a bit too too aggressive with the, the hands and fingers and shit. So It is a good uh, point. I although, is, although so. John, you know, he puts the fingers out. You know, I mean, I'm, yeah, 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 you're not wrong. <laughs> but I mean, see, it's still aggressive. That's right. Aggressive, right. No finesse. <laughs> that is right. That is right. All right. So uh, April 9th, uh, location TBD, uh, you versus the Korean zombie. This is a big time fight. I like it. I mean, he's looked good. And uh, honestly, it's one of those fights where people bellyache and all that. On the night itself, I feel like there's no way that you two together, like the the the, the concoction that is you and him together makes for a boring fight. You know what I mean? I don't know if no. Zombie has ever been in a boring fight, period. And you, as of late, I mean, I don't know. By the way, congratulations. You won the MMA Hour Round of the Year Award. I know it's very prestigious, and you were very emotional when you found out the news. But, uh, I mean, that round, round three, is an all-time great. How many times have you watched it, by the way, that round? I've watched it a few times. Yeah, I've watched so it, great. Because uh, yeah, it's funny, because we've had to do a couple of, uh, obviously, gigs for it as well. So a lot of people, you know, want to see my reaction while I do it, or, you know, we go over it. Like, uh, I did it's so great. That, like that, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, yeah, man, I watch it and well, there's still a lot of buzz around it, so that's good. But, you know, so, hey, that's what I'm, man, it's, it's funny. I'm, I'll leave you with this because I used to, I'm such a competitor, right? I've always been a competitor and that's that was my main focus. Where now, you know, it's more than that. You know, I've made it clear leading into the, the last fight that, you know, we, obviously winning is great, but it's, it's, it's more than that. And uh, with Zombie, yeah, man, it's going to be a fun fight. 
You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm going to prove that I'm, I'm, I'm still the best uh, by far, but it's going to be a fun fight. Can't wait. So uh, I'm really looking forward and I'm going to make sure uh, we put on a, a good show and, and I can't wait to go out there and entertain. Man, give me give me these crowds again, man. I'm, I'm loving that. Yeah. The last that was, the last one was, I'm still buzzing from it. Get me in there, sold out stadium and let's have some fun. Yeah, and they can, they can charge $75 here in the US for that fight. I'd pay an, another 75 for a live feed on Izzy as he watches the fight. I mean, those reactions are just incredible with him at home watching it. So perhaps, by the way, perhaps when he fights, you should do, you should return the favor and do a, a YouTube because you know, I know you're active on, you do one of him. You do one of you watching him. What about that? What about that idea? That's a yeah, million man, dollar well, idea. Got, uh, it is a very, very good idea because uh, yeah, I've got my own YouTube channel. And yeah. We're still doing, I do cooking. I do cooking on that as well. Um, I'm even doing a breakdowns and, and things like yes. that. And, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm even doing picks, mate, and I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good with the picks. So I break it I break it right down to detail for everyone, so I have fun with that. But, yeah, I think the reactions is definitely going to be a thing I'm going to do. And, um, yeah, I definitely uh, – because I get, I, get, I, mean, I get more emotional watching people fight than when I fight. I bet. I, you know, my, I can't control my emotions. I guess I'm not trying to. So, uh, you know, I'm usually trying to keep myself uh, – uh, level and compose when I fight, but when I'm watching people fight, I'm like, I like freak out, you know. What I mean, so I get nervous when other people fight. I don't get nervous when I fight. So it's it's funny. So you definitely get a good reactions uh, when I'm watching people fight. I'm in there, I'm slipping. With yeah. The guy. Oh, we yeah. got to see it for two seventy one. You got to do it for the Izzy fight. That's the one. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll definitely. All I'm right. Actually, having a chat with you today. Okay. Well, tell him I say hello. Will do. All right. Thank you, Alex. All the best. Always a pleasure. Always great to have you on. And I felt bad for you. Everyone coming at you. I mean, man, Alex doesn't, you know, he's not that guy. I mean, he's respectful. So I'm That's glad. It's a good all... thing, mate. It's a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. A good it thing. is a good thing. It's a little personal at times. The insult. Don't cry about it when you don't get the shot. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's right. Thank you, Alex. All the best to you. See you, mate. All right. There he is. Always gracious with his time. Alex Volkanovsky, the reigning defending UFC featherweight champion and so it shall be on april 9th him versus uh the korean zombie chan sung jung and he is right he is an og put some damn respect on chan sung jung's name for god's sakes people acting like chan sung jung is just some scrub come on it's a nice story it's a nice story and i'm looking forward to it it's a great fight it's a nice two pack of fights if you will with uh the featherweight title and the bantamweight title on the card all right um, okay, so it seems like New York Rick can't join us because of the family. Hey, perhaps he can join us on Wednesday. We'll see if we can, you know, squeeze him in. Uh, it has been a fun day. It has been a packed day. A lot of people snowed in, a lot of people at home. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the program. If you were watching it live and uh, if you're watching it after the fact, I hope you enjoyed it as well. But we're out of time. So you can hear my music. Another fun one in the books, and we shall be back on uh, Wednesday. Already some guest book for that, so stay tuned. Of course, uh, we shall talk more about UFC 270. Going to be a fun one. High stakes, high drama, great theater. Back at the Honda Center, the Pond in Anaheim. Last time they were there was uh, for DC Steep A2, also uh, Nathan Diaz versus Anthony Pettis. So a long time ago, August of 2019, believe it or not. So it's been it's been a minute, as the kids like to say. So we'll talk more about that on uh, Wednesday's show. For now, though, we're out of time. Thank you very much to DraftKings. Thank you to the guys in the back. Thanks to all of you. And, of course, thank you to today's guest. Hopefully uh, you have learned not to disrespect Calvin Cater anymore. Big time win for New England's own. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a sports fan from New England, you were happy on Saturday, I presume. You were happy, right? I mean, your guy won, so... That's great. Thank you very much to uh, Misha Tate. And of course, uh, congrats to Calvin Cater and the New England Cartel. Thank you very much to Aljamain Sterling. Thank you very much to Michael Venom Page. And of course, thank you very much to Alexander the Great Volkanovsky. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say, I'm out of here.